Hello, welcome to Perf Stream. Today we're gonna be doing Perf stuff. Uh, that sound fun? All right, we'll do some Perf stuff. We'll uh, we're gonna play some Terraria first. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see. How's my village doing? Oh, it's doing great. Oh yeah. Is a gamer stream? Welcome to the gamer stream. Uh. All right, all right, all right. What do I want to do here? Hmm. What's my what's my stratego here? What do I really need? Do I need to build more rooms? Uh, yeah. Okay, I've got space for one person. These rooms are too small. Everyone knows this song. Which one? The Limp Biscuit song or the uh, Nine Inch Nails song? Do I have enough eyes to summon the boss? Probably not. Oh, I've got 14 lenses. Where do I craft the eye? It's a lyric from this song. Yeah, that's the um, Nine Inch Nails songs, right? You like an animal. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Best game ever, I agree. I'm pretty far. I've de I've defeated the Eye of Cthune. So I'm pretty happy with that right now. Um I'm Trying to think what I want to do here. I could tr I could try and kill the next boss, but I'm kind of scared to. Honestly, I could try. I could mm, Shit. How do I summon the boss? It's the lenses and I forget what I need. Um, don't know if it's in a Nine Inch Nails song. Uh, the song that's sampled in this should be, um, Closer by Nine Inch Nails. Ah, uh, Corrupted Altar. I need six, so I can do two summons. All right. Me like an animal. 2D Minecraft? Yeah, it's it's just strictly better because it's 2D. What difficulty and world size? Uh, expert, uh, permadeath, large, the hardest possible mode. It's the only way that I play games. If there's a permadeath option in games, I will play it. I have, I've made it to hard mode, like twice. I'm pretty close. I think I'm gonna make it this, this go round. Unfortunately, I don't really know how to beat the boss in this, uh, oops, I kinda want this. I don't know how to beat the boss in this, uh, in this, uh, crimson. The, the eye boss, it's like really hard for me. I don't know if I'm gonna br bring grenades. I'm gonna make uh, star arrows. It's slightly more damage. I have a star fear. The problem is I just, I can't get in melee range. So I think what I might do is I might just cheese the boss a couple times um, and see what happens. Did you try No Man's Sky? No, I haven't I haven't played shit for games. I'm playing this. Uh which I've, I'm like a day into. Did I go the wrong way? Oh shit. Why did I pick the furthest? Yeah. Honestly, I'm like really far from the crimson. 
Whoa, I'm getting gassed. Talk shit about me. EU friendly stream, damn right. <laughs> Hi, Euro pores. <laughs> yeah, got him. <laughs> you fuck about me. Blame. Don't blame us. Is this second album I ever bought? Uh, this this is a phenomenal album. As much as people knock Limp Biscuit, this album's fucking fantastic. It it just it it actually just is. <laughs> shit on uh shit on this genre, the like new metal genre. Sorry. It's just actually a fucking masterpiece. I do Are you playing for the worthy or just master modes? I, I don't think, I, I don't know what for the worthy is. I haven't unlocked it. I'm playing in whatever is the most difficult mode that you can select in the menu. I don't know if that's a custom seed or something. We don't ever give a fuck on. How many vertebrae, vertebratora do I have? I'm just gonna farm this a little bit until it's nighttime because I'm gonna need these vertebrae. But uh, then we'll do a boss and the boss we're gonna do is gonna be easy, but I, I think what I might do is just craft a bunch of bows until I get the best one. Yeah, get out of here, slimy boy. All killer, no filler by some 41. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that was. Uh, dude, some 41 was just a terrible band. Don't get me wrong. I love some 41. But goddamn, their music is ass. <laughs> if it weren't for nostalgia, no one would listen to that shit anymore. Can find the secret seeds? Yeah, I know they have like an anniversary like party seed. I probably shouldn't have lit this place. I sh you know what I should go get is some of the water torches for increased spawn rate. Because I have one of the banners here. I don't have the banner for the, the flyy dudes. Or for these jumpy boys. Who are these? Face monsters? Come on, jump up here. Yeah, let's go. So I have double damage to the spiders. And before I get the boss, I want to have banners for all of them. Just so I'm a little bit more prepared. I just don't know how to do this boss. Which kind of sucks. Like, that's the, that's the hard part of playing on permadeath. Is like, I can't experiment on bosses if i experiment and die then i'm then i have to go through another like four hours to get to the stage again and four hours is pretty pretty low i would say like it really depends if i get lucky on like herb bags and good good uh good mines and caves nearby it really affects like how fast i progress at least with my strategy I was 12 or something, I didn't know good music. I mean, we all love Sum 41. I still do to this day. But uh, they didn't know how to play their instruments, man. Uh, World Heater is easier than Brain of Cthulhu. Yeah. Brain is just really hard because I don't know any way around face tanking the, the eyes. So I think last time I used grenades, I can't remember if grenades inflict damage to yourself. That's like my main concern is I don't want to kill myself to grenades. 
But I need good AoE damage, and I can get arrows. Um, I think I have enough stars. Let's see if it's nighttime yet. Nah, we can sleep until it's nighttime. Um, what do I want for consumes? Archery for damage, iron skin, regen, and we have healing pots. Uh, that's pretty good. And then I have, have I placed my heart lantern? I don't think so. Let's place that next to my star in a bottle. I didn't realize how good heart lanterns were. So you got a heart lantern. Heart lamp, mana, and then fire. We'll have regen pot, iron skin, and archery. So this boss will be really easy. And I crafted them, thank god. For a second I thought I didn't craft them. Ooh, it's dusk, so we can farm those. Um, you know what? I need to expand my farming ops, but I only just recently got the dryad. So now that I have the dryad, I can actually buy a bunch of, uh... Bunch of things. Actually, I'm gonna buy a bunch of sunflowers. Charge me 64 silver for those fucking things? They're like free. Grenades are like arrows and don't damage you? Okay. Yeah, I'll have to double check that. If that's the case, then I think grenades has to be my play here. Because I, I just... <sighs> Honestly, what I think I'm gonna do is grenade them. And then, uh, not this boss, but the other boss... Okay, let's get sunflowers down just because they give move speed. Down on me. I'm not going to be able to place it here because there's no grass yet. Okay, got it. Nice. These have a pretty big range. My ship. I know these are like... Oh, I have one right here. I don't really want to place too many around here. Because it does fuck up spawns, but I guess I just won't farm mobs here. This time I'm gonna stand up and shout. And then we have flaming arrows, which is gonna be fine for this boss. Terraria, yeah. Do I have enough gold? I do have enough gold to buy grenades. I have Star Fury. It's kind of a shitty Star Fury. But I think... What my plan is right now is we're going to kill two of these bosses and then just make a bunch of bows until we maybe RNG one with slightly better stats. Ever played Calamity? No, I haven't. Woo. I'm like really only into 2D games right now. I'm playing that and then uh, Tibia. Um, this is a new private server that came out like three weeks ago. I only found it like three days ago. My goal is to get number one sword fighting, just like every other server that I play. I don't know why I like doing that so much, but this server is really popular. There's like 2,000 active players. I probably shouldn't be a character lover because I'm just going to get PvP'd and then get pissed when I lose my skills and then quit, but that's okay. That's just, I guess, how I enjoy playing it. 2k active yeah let me see what it's at at least that's where it was servers like this can die down really 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 fast yeah they've been hitting like 2k active on one server which is hot as fuck technically that's all their servers but um yeah it's like 2k a little bit less over the weekend which is kind of weird it's uh i I think it's mainly a Polish server. Um, shout out to all my Poles. That's insane for a private Tibia server. Honestly, what a, private Tibia servers are interesting in that there's always like one popular one at a given time. And I don't know, they usually will have like a thousand to two thousand, but yeah, it's pretty populated. Like if I if I hop into uh that's the wrong one. If I, like, hop into town, there will be people everywhere. Yeah, there's people, like, just chilling here. Um, I have 63 gold to my name. I, I bought this character. This server allows you to buy a character, so I just bought this character. I don't want to get killed here because I have literally no defenses right now. 
Um, I, I, I have no potions. I have no hotkeys. I've only been training. I have not played yet. But yeah, this account was like... This character was like fucking... I don't know. 10, 10 euro? And it, it saves me one and a half weeks or two weeks of, of farming. So now I have a chance of actually ke catching up. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on that SSA uh, just in case. That might save me from getting killed here, theoretically. Let's go defensive stance. I probably shouldn't have gone to town. Um, that being said, there's really no reason someone should randomly PK me. They're going to be really disappointed when they find out I literally have... Okay, there's a war going on. Yeah, when you see magic walls, there, there's war going on. Um, so <laughs> and, and sometimes you can just be a, a casualty to that. So I'm just going to go into here and hide my ass until I, until I feel safe to come out. Surprise, Tibia is still so popular. Yeah, this is an 8.0 server, which is way more modern than I usually play. I don't really know much about 8.0. Um... So, I, I have to kind of learn, but I just haven't really set aside the time to, to play it yet. Factory re rewrite it in Rust when? Okay, we're just waiting for it to become night, which is like any second now. Otherwise, I'd sleep in the bed. There it is. Shit right here, L-I-M-P. Woo! Uh, and we'll pop my bus. I need to up my farm a bit because my farm's a little weak. Where the fuck you at? Shut the fuck up. Official Tibia has 7,300 online. Yeah, I mean, right now is not a great time for Tibia. I think they're still getting like uh, 13k at peak times. Obviously split between many servers. Okay, this dude just doesn't do much damage to me anymore. Which is weird because I only have uh, platinum armor. Don't really have that good of armor. And I don't think I have any defense on my uh, gear. Then I think I hear. Okay, he still hits for 26 in, in phase two. And there's in the mosh pit. What do I want to do for Brain of Cthulhu? I think Grenades is going to be the strat. This part gets really hard to aim. I have a health pot too. I'm not worried about it at all. I'm doing fine. Woo! And a health pot, just because they're free. This new bow is so slow. The tendon bow compared to platinum bow. Still more damage. Ooh, violent shield of Cthulhu. That's good. Four melee speed. We can ta trash these, trash this. Actually, I don't even know if these vendor for anything. Hey, Az, how's it going? Um, I don't need Crimson Seeds. I'll put on the Cthulhu Mask. I think that's a rare-ish drop. Honestly, I don't need more Daybloom Seeds. I mean, I shouldn't get rid of them. Um, oh, that sells for almost a gold. Okay, not bad, not bad. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna fight another one. Probably should just do that instead of wasting these sooms. Soom, sooms are what pe call, cool people call consumes. Trying to learn Kubernetes. God damn it, dude. Every time I see Kubernetes, I cringe. <laughs> it's 
It's just, it's just like the meme. Everyone's always learning Kubernetes. Every time I get like sketchy uh, Twitter promoted tweets that are meant to look like they're not promoted from development companies, it's fucking Kubernetes every goddamn time, dude. I'm cringing right now, <laughs> yeah. These new wings that I'm using, this item, these seem to be a new item. It seems like lucky horseshoes don't come from floating uh, islands anymore. You can get horseshoes now from in the uh, dungeon chests. And I think they were maybe replaced with wings. I don't know. I haven't actually looked at the, the wiki. But that's... Oh, God. I almost hit him with the star. I don't know if bosses are immune to the star, but if you hit someone with a star, I think it does like 2,000 damage or something absolutely fucking redonkulous. I don't even smoke, but I love the way it smells. What a, what a fucking lyric, dude. And then I think we'll try and make some vicious powders. God, I'm critting for fucking 70. Can you get an Eye of Cthulhu um, banner that gives you double damage? If I kill, uh, if I kill 50 of these, we'll heal just because we can. I really should switch to like melee during that phase, but whatever. Not giving a fuck. Uh, 4% move speed, which isn't bad. Uh, I really like defense. And these do have defense. I kind of wish... Hmm. They have two base defense. I do want a horseshoe because a horseshoe is really important on permadeath because otherwise you just fall and you die and it's cringe. Band of Regen. I do want Band of Regen as well, and Sailfish Boots, and these wings. I, God, I want everything here. Oh, God, what do I replace? Well, I have a Band of Regen that literally is just a strict improvement. Um, What about Boots? 3% damage or 4% melee speed? I could do 4% move speed instead of 3% damage. I think I like that. I use mobility, I think, more. I really want to use some of these quick things. 4% move speed. I, I gain one defense. I lose being able to climb walls. That's a tough decision. Wings allow for slow fall, so do you need the horseshoe? Technically, no. That's just so risky. I don't know. I'll fucking try it. We'll put in a... We'll use the move speed, shield of Cthulhu, and replace the horseshoe. And that gets us 2% move speed and 2 defense. Defense in this mode, every one defense is one damage less taken per hit, which is pretty massive. Um, let's make sure I have everything. I have a fire. I have a heart lantern. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's do some smelting. Let's smelt some of our crimtain. And let's see if we RNG a good bow. I don't know what the best bow is, but we can probably make a billion of them. I could also maybe use a yo-yo. I, I just suck at yo-yos. 23 melee damage, fast speed. 23 very fast. Mm, we can RNG one of these. Savage. There we go. That's better. More knockback, more damage, more size. That's an upgrade over Star Fury. Okay, we got lucky on that because I, I didn't want to make more than one. I don't really use much melee. And then I think we're just going to pound up bows, which are eight each. Unreal, I think that's Biss. <laughs> I think, I think that's literally this.
The best modifier is Unreal. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, well, fuck me. <laughs> How did... <laughs> I can't believe that. What are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? How many how many picks are there? For Yo-Yo, you should search for the skeleton uh skeleton merchant. Yeah, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be in the dungeon for a while. I'll have all uh molten gear by then. But I actually got really lucky on my herb bags, and I do have um, fire herbs, so I'm going to be able to... The second I can mine molten stuff, when I get this pickaxe upgrade from this next boss, I can go and mine it right away. Wow, that grew fast. Okay. Insane. Insane. Let's see what the furry vendor has to offer right now. Anything good from the furry vendor? Bunny ears and a bunny tail? Ooh, I could get a hook. I always forget about hooks. Hooks aren't really in my rotation, but they need to be. It doesn't use up a slot. I think it's uh, E? How many different hooks can I have active on this one? I need to, I need to learn how to... Okay, just one hook on this. Cannoli's got a dope UI. Yeah. Spawns randomly in the cavern layer. You don't need the dungeon. Oh. What would be the best way to find it then? You know what? I'm going to quickly... You know what? I'm just going to mine in the open. I think it's okay. Uh, or farm in the open. Um... I'm gonna grab all my seeds and we're just gonna plant everything. I just, I need a bigger supply than this and this is, this is weak. Planter boxes, let's go, I don't know, like here. This will just be another platform. Cause you can stand on these and you can jump through them, nice. You can use hunter potions when you go mining. Does hunter show? NPCs? Hunter's kind of tough. I think you need uh, the, the thing from the desert mobs. So I would have to go farm those. I'm just not going to organize my farm, unfortunately. I just don't have the time to right now. And until... Until I get molten gear, I don't really like setting up a base too much. So I'm just going to lose. God, I've got a lot of moon glow though. So I'm going to have literally unlimited splunker potions. And splunker potions are my strategy in this game. Uh... Wow, am I going to need more planter boxes here? Not quite, but almost. And we'll sprinkle in the blinkrit. Okay, that was great. Now we're making progress. Uh, we'll put the planter boxes in here. And then for consumes... Let's see, do I have... I do have my iron in here, which is good. And I just need to get in range. Uh, regen pots, I mean, I don't... I don't... Oh, I threw it away. It's like, what the fuck? Where did it go? Uh, regen, iron skin. Uh, we got a, we got a rust potion. Um... Mana regen, don't need that shit. Magic power. I never use magic. I think it's just not good until later. Might as well make some night owls. Um, archery pots. We can only make two, but that's okay. Builder pots are nice to have. Uh, and then we'll make all my vicious powder. 
And then... Get mini shark? For this boss? That's a strat. I've never had good success with mini shark, but maybe I'm just dumb. Oh, uh, we have to make arrows. We're gonna make all jesters for this. So we get, uh, pen. Penetration. Obsidians, water walking. Oh, thorns. We'll grab a thorns. Um, honestly, I'd like to get better fish. What's the best fish I can get? Cooked fish. Cooked fish. Um, exquisitely satisfied. How much better is that? Well fed is two defense plenty. Oh, it's it's way better. Wow, that's way better. Do they stack? Only one can be active. Okay. Um, seafood dinner. Armored cave fish. We can get some of these fishies, I think. Specular fish. Forest jungle snow in the underground or underworld layers. I think... Yeah, I can just do armored cave fish, I think. What's an endurance potion? Reduces damage taken by 10%? Blink root? Do I have blink root? Oh, oh, we're gonna make some of those too. We're gonna go all out, chat. He's into tar uh, Terraria. It's really a read the fucking manual kind of game. Yeah, there's a lot of content and it's fantastic. It's a masterpiece. This is probably my favorite game of all time. It's just, it, this game is perfect. The community is perfect. The, the, like, it's just perfect. Let's see what our quest is today. Hopefully it's underground. Sky lakes and surface. No, we're not going to do that. Um, is there anything that we can buy? I mean, can, we'll, we'll make arrows. We're going to make arrows now before I forget to make arrows. We'll take our flamings out. And we're going to go fully jester. And I think I'm going to have enough to do this. God, rip all my stars. I thought these used to give 25 per, but maybe they just upped the drop rate of... Uh... Uh, let's see. And we can just convert the rest into flamings. Really agree with the perfection? Yeah. Okay, we got flamings, and we got a good amount of jesters. We have our fire. We have that. We're going to go fish for armored cave fish. Um, oh, my God. I used all my stars like an idiot. Uh, do I have any worms? I have my bug net. Let, we'll have to... Let's go worm hunting real quick. I had a modded server for Starbound for a while. Oh my god. Starbound's great, but... Oh, we got a worm. Just one. Okay, let's, uh, let's not use Jester's for lighting. Um... I really need to make a worm farm. I guess I could just hit all these. Do I have my uh, creature? Yeah, my companion. What's this game called? This is called Terraria. It's a masterpiece. Come on, give me like three worms. Oh, fuck yeah. These things almost never give worms. Nothing? Grasshopper? I don't care about grasshoppers, to be honest. Oh my god, I'm getting robbed. I'm getting robbed!
I need to remember that I take fall damage. Holy shit. I'm like really scared to be playing without that horseshoe. That is the easiest way to die in uh in this mode. We're gonna get the uh we gotta get the worms, the spaghetti, the nature, the dirt spaghetti. Yeah, mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the pasta. Woo! Does that mean we're about to get a slime raid? Oh, I don't know how to do the slime boss. <laughs> we got a worm. Nice. What's the name of this OS called? Terraria. Oh, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go! Big worms, big worms! Whoa, what the fuck's that? Bruh! That thing scared the shit out of me. The fuck was that? Oh, it's windy? Ooh, there we go. Two down here. Playing master expert? I don't know the, the difference. I think both? <laughs> Aren't they different difficulty things? You can have both on, right? No, sir. All right, uh, and then we need to get some stars, so we gotta go to nighttime. Master is harder and there are more items. Yeah, an expert, I think, is a... Oh, I'm playing hardcore. Playing hardcore and master. You have a Cthulhu shield? Might just use it before hitting the ground. Yeah. Normally, I use double jump instead. Let's see. We'll get to the programming content. Don't worry, chat. I do want to farm these. Not that I need too many more fire blossoms, but, um... To be honest, I want everything. I want to be able to make every goddamn potion in the game. Okay... Daybloom seeds, might as well. Might as well plant them. And then we're just waiting on stars so we can get upgraded bait so that we can get uh, uh, the fish. And then once we have the fish, then we can make endurance potions, which is huge. I didn't even know. I never make fish pots, to be honest. Let's see what else I can be using for buffs. Uh, ammo preservation potion? Is that hardcore or hard mode? Double cod? I could make those as well. I mean, I don't really care too much about my ammo. I do have archery pots. Um... Yeah, endurance pot's gonna be big here. Wrath, endurance, and iron skin, and resto. You can kill everything with just these pots. Yeah, it's kind of true. The potions are massive. God, I kind of should farm these. Is that glowing? No. I don't think so. Drifty, thank you so much for the tier one subarino. Sorry, we're not doing coding yet, but uh, I'm having a little bit of fun right now. <laughs> I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Euros to wake up. I guess I should do this at the end of the night when there's more stars around. We are awake. <laughs> it's past midday in Euroland? Yeah, Europeans wake up late because they have no work ethic. If Europeans had a work ethic and they got up at real hours like Americans did and, and worked 
hard, then they would not care. Uh, they would care about taxes or something. I don't. I don't know where I was going with that. It was gonna be a just. If you're a European, just just view that as an insult to yourselves, because you're European. Okay, sick burn. <laughs> Oh fuck, we gotta do a British accent. Alright, uh well, I don't know where the fucking stars are, mate. Brav! Yeah fucking slag, mate! You taking the piss? Oh Yeah, you want some tea and crumpets, yeah? Yeah, let's go let's go find some stars, yeah? Oh there's a star right there. Right there, brav! Right in front of me. Chat, I think all of you are stars. Yeah? I pay my taxes. <laughs> I pay my taxes. I'm not doing too great on stars, yeah? So stars you used to make a, a sky bridge, yeah? I would hope maybe I'd get something here, but I think it's just not deep enough into the night. I need to remember I can't jump like that. I... Oh, that's fucking risky, mate. I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of want to put my horseshoe. What's what's crazy is like once I get to the horseshoe phase, right? The ho horseshoe. Ho horseshoe. I don't know how to say horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare. Once I, once I get my horseshoe for the first time, I kind of just assume that I always have it. Ah, oh, fuck me. I mean, so far I haven't killed myself. Yeah? How many of these stars do I need? I need 12. I need four more. Last and free healthcare. Yeah? Yeah, enjoy your fucking lines. You enjoy your cues. <laughs> enjoy your cues <laughs> at the health place. <laughs> Enjoy someone with the most serious illness getting treated before you do for your petty cough. How fucked is that? <laughs> Fucking EU healthcare can't pay to preempt the line. <laughs> Dying of cancer? Too bad. I've got a cough and I, I, uh, oh, I've got more money than you, so I get service first. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because that's literally like the US argument against free healthcare in the EU is like, you gotta wait in queues for so long. Yeah, because your stupid fucking illness probably doesn't matter. Like your, your 99 degree fever, I don't know what that is in Celsius, I guess, uh, how did I get a vertebrae there? Um, <laughs> I'll take a queue over no healthcare, yeah. The, the problem is a lot of American like, for Americans, having free healthcare means that you don't get your preferential treatment. Or more specifically, there's more competition for the same healthcare workers. And we're, we're certainly not going to just fucking increase staffing, because that would decrease profits. <laughs> I do want to plant all this blink root. I think blink root's what I need the most right now. Um... Now we can make these enchanted night crawlers, put on my flesh catcher, and we can go fishing. Chat, who's excited to do some fishing? I don't know why I'm giving you British accent for free. This is not fucking fair. Uh, okay. What's the horse? God, I, now I'm just, I can't get out of the accent. Fuck me. Alright, uh, welcome to my fishing ground. A bit generous to call it British? You realize I can ban you. Oh, there we go. Two speckies. So we want to grill up the speckies. An iron crate? You know what? I love crates, but I don't want crates right now. I want 
Oh, you know what? I did want it. Never mind. Love it. Armored cave fish. So which one do I need? I think both can two turn into good food. British sounds more Australian. <laughs> Mate, that's not a, that's not Australian. Look, okay, British people to Americans sound way more intense, intensely accented than you think. Like, as, as British people, you're like, our, our accents are quite mild. <laughs> but in America, we think you have the worst goddamn fucking accents on the planet. I mean, obviously, they're super attractive. Is Terraria the 2D Minecraft? It's it's way different from Minecraft. It's just not it's not a fair comparison. First of all, it's just a way better game than Minecraft. Second of all, it's just a way better game than Minecraft. <sighs> Stream is hosted in Freedom Land, my freedom of speech. It's 2D Minecraft with actual content, yeah. <laughs> Copium. Let me get an EpiPen for 700 bucks? Well, don't be poor and you're fine in America, okay? That's the thing a lot of, pe a lot of people get that wrong. They come here looking for good work. And then they get really mad when they find out that, yeah, if, if you don't have money, you suck. <laughs> I laugh because it's sad, not because I believe that that's the right thing. <laughs> Will you write your own streaming platform anytime soon? I've thought about it. Okay, let's switch that to dark mode. Oh, thank God. I, I do wish I could stream at a higher bitrate than this. This bitrate, when I watch the VODs, I cringe. So what I really should do is I should set up another, uh, a separate computer for basically handling the stream. Um, but I don't know. Well, like, where am I going to put it? I could do like fiber optic HDMI. Ooh, frog like. Um, what I could maybe do is, can you get HDMI over single mode fiber? Because I already have 36 fibers into my server room. I could stream to my server room and then I'd be, I would have, it wouldn't be extra heat. It wouldn't be extra compute in here. That would be hot as fuck. I've also just thought about going to, uh, um, switching entirely to, uh, it being desktop -less. HDMI, Ethernet, Fiber, that doesn't count. The problem is that requires software and all of that software sucks ass. <laughs> you don't need a special PC for streaming. Yikes. Lindy HDMI fiber optic extender. Like, I can just pull more fiber if I have to. Um. Oh my god! Oh my god, that is awesome! Dude, that is sick! That is so cool! And that does 18 gigabit? Which is pretty good. OM3 fiber, that's what I have pulled. Um, transmits AV signals at 18 gigabits. 4K UHD at 60. 4448 bit, which is fine. That's 
I don't need more bits. Can handle color depths up to 12. So I guess it slightly re-encodes it. Sampling. Dude, that is sick. I don't get who makes things like this, but it's cool as fuck that it exists. What's the use case? Uh, probably a lot of companies. Think about it, like, think about going into, like, a conference hall or, like, a business where there's, like, TVs fucking everywhere. They have, like, TVs with ads or displays or their company propaganda. Um, lots of times you'll just see, like, a small little PC behind the TVs. But stuff like this is, like, what I would do, because then you have, like, a centralized system. Thunderbolt over fiber to get all the peripherals? Shit, chat. Should we? That's gonna be, like, I was thinking about making my own thing for remotely playing games, but I might as well just, I mean, there's no reason to stream gameplay, rem like, do local streaming of games over Ethernet and software if I literally, because that would get me HDMI. Um... And I guess I need pairs for that, which kind of sucks. How many, let's see how many, how many fibers do I have right now? I can always pull more fiber if I have to. God, am I running out of fucking fiber slots? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight more pairs of fiber. What did I say? Seven more pairs of fiber? Um... Because I really... I hate to say it, chat. Uh, these desktops, man... You can't use low clock rate desktops. You just, you just can't, dude. You just fucking can't. It feels fucking bad, but it's true. Like... Ooh, tsunami in a bottle? Also, fiber HDMI cables? Yeah. The, the thing is, I, I want to use the converter box because I already have... Um, I already have fiber pulls. So I can just go directly over these LC connections, and I don't have to... P pulling an HDMI cable is fucking hard because you need to pull it with the head on it. Whereas this, I don't have to pull the head. I can just, I can, if I have to add another fiber box and upgrade to having, I, I mean, I can just add another 18 pulls uh, pretty trivially. Especially if you're gaming. Yeah. Gaming, Ida, pretty much all software is single threaded. I I'm sorry. Uh, there, there's, I don't think there's anything other than, like, building a select few projects. Um, ooh, Heart Reach, that's actually a good potion for this. Um, other than, like, a select few things when you compile them, like, uh, let's switch to my Master Bait. Um, other than, like... Maybe Chrome builds pretty effectively. I don't know what a stink fish is. Oh, is that a quest fish? I think it is. So let's sort my inventory out. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the apprentice bait. Uh, well, we'll just put it in my fishing box. Okay, uh, stink fish. I do think that is a... Quest I'm, honestly, I don't need to keep fishing, do I? Put all our baits in there. Let's put our sunflowers in our miscellaneous pot. I think stinkfish is a quest item. But yeah, other than like Chrome and like LLVM that use decent build systems where things actually kind of scale. Um, ah, it isn't. Stinkfish is something else. With the things that are happening with CPUs, we'll have to see more threading. No, we're not going to see it. We're just not. No one gives a fuck, dude. 
it's this it's the same thing with security like we're not gonna see we're not gonna see improved security either it's just never gonna happen like that was kind of always my view is like oh with enough time like people start caring no they'll never care because the people who care are not the people who are making the money and thus making the decisions and it's kind of fucking sad but it's kind of also true Feels fucking bad, man. Dot com dot jpeg dot co dot uk. Um. I uh, don't need this. Let's dump my shitty cooked fish. So, so. We're just not gonna get performant software. Like. I wish that devs, like, dev'd on fucking Xeon Fies, so they actually felt how fast, or more specifically, how slow their code was. But the problem is, like, everyone devs their shit on their 6 gigahertz gaming computer, and then you go to build it on, like, a 2 gigahertz Xeon, because all Xeons, basically all server processors are clocked at, like, a third the clock rate of, like, gaming cores. And then you get these massive, massive, massive single-threaded bottlenecks that, that people don't even know exist. Like, they, they just don't even know they exist. And then for building, like, people don't care because they ship it to their shitty Docker thing. And they, like, don't even know that it is slow to build in the first place because they've never even built it themselves. Like, there's just, ugh. The software just sucks ass, dude. That would change if company had to pay heavy fines. Yeah, they just won't. They don't give a fuck. They don't care because the consumers don't care either. In fact, it's the opposite. Consumers hate security. Like, obviously, you have business customers who are like, oh, we, re we really care about security, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, people fucking hate security stuff. Look, look at any time things come up about, like, new Microsoft mitigations and stuff. People are like... Oh, this is going to affect my gaming performance. Oh, I got to turn off more features. Oh, Windows adding more bloat. Oh, they're using this to spy on you. Oh, Secure Boot is a, is a backdoored mechanism for the NSA to get into your system. It's like, all right. It's just, it, you're just not going to win. It, it's, just, it's just a big fucking fat L. <laughs> I have, I have the utmost respect for security people because I do think security people are trying to make things better and good. But God damn it, everyone's against you. The shareholders are against you because they don't want to spend any money on security unless they have to. So security basically is just a fluff piece, right? Security is doing the bare minimum so that you can say that you're doing things. And, and don't get me wrong. That's not me insulting the engineers. I fucking love engineers. I love the researchers. I think they, a lot of times they aren't working to their capacity. And that's not because the engineers aren't working to the capac their capacity. It's because they have shitty incentives by shitty management with shitty bosses with shitty incentives. Like a really common thing that I saw in, in my small time in, in that fucking shit space was that literally the managers who get these positions to manage these security teams often have no security background. They're just people who are like, oh, I heard that security is like the booming place to be, so I want to dip my toes in there, a.k.a. I want to make money there and build a name. And it's like, dude, you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Managers don't need to be technical. But they should at least have some relevant knowledge, not even technical. They should understand that, like, security is not engineering. It's not about hiring the cheapest fucking people that you can and working them to the bone. That doesn't do anything for security. <laughs> Secure boot. Uh, the thing I first turn off when I want to boot from a, a CD, then forget about. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people turn off secure boot because it's just hard. Same with, like, SE Linux. A lot of people don't run SE Linux on desktops. Please rate Terraria source code. 
Looks great. Looks fucking great. Um. But yeah, like, it's, it, it, it's tough because, like, <sighs> companies basically need enough ammo that if they were to come under, like, legal scrutiny or, like, something big were to happen, like, some big, big, big deal happened, um, companies need to be able to say, like, we have a hundred-person cybersecurity org working at their hardest and they're, they're all giving talks and they're all well known in the industry and they're industry leaders and it's a, it, it's yeah here's here's the here's the here's the thing you're not going to secure the outputs of 60,000 developers with a 30 person team with incompetent management or with any management even with the best goddamn management even if you paid those researchers literally $10 million a year, cash, no stock, no perverse incentives, it's just, it's just not going to happen. That's just not how things work. Like, it probably would take me a month to effectively audit a 2,000 or 3,000 line of code code base, and you have single developers producing that monthly. <laughs> it's just it's just game over. So you either have to change what you're doing, like change the way that you develop code, um or you got to change your incentives and bring more people like it's just yeah, you're just fucked. Monthly some do like in 2 weeks. I mean, what is it like the average person writes like the average dev writes like 30 lines of code a day or something? The stat's, like, really low. <laughs> that being said, lines of code doesn't mean shit. We all know that, though. I don't want grav pots on me. That's, that's danger, Noodle. Ah, we could actually do some scouting. I don't know. Uh, I don't need my danger sense. Heart reach is good. Endurance is big. We have healing pots. Regen pots, gills, don't need that. Thorns, archery, okay, and then we need to cook some seafood dinners. And we're gonna cook the, which ones did I just use for my archery, uh, no, my endurance pot. I use armored cave fish, so I wanna use the specular fish. Now we have food buffs. Okay, I think that is almost every buff that I can get. Oh, fuck yeah, I can harvest these right now. Deathweed is really rare. I think it's the rarest one to harvest. I don't even know when you can harvest it. Isn't it like blood moon? Oh, it's like full moons or blood moons, I think. Come on, give me six seeds. Yeah, neutral EV. Isn't the average like 5,000 line of code merged a year? I have no idea. I mean, I don't even know how people measure that stuff decently. Because you have to like pull like stack overflow and that's just going to be so, so unbelievably biased. First of all, people are going to like overestimate how much code they have. Um... Okay, the outro for this album sucks ass, but we'll put on significant other. Um, okay, we have a lot of healing pots. We have a lot of buffs. Uh, we've got our bow. We've got our good arrows. Um, we got some Vic Pals. We need my vertebrae. And then we need to buy nades. And grenade. I need to see if they hurt myself. Um, they'll bounce slightly and roll, after which it will explode, do range damage, do throwing damage, so range armor sets bonuses will not apply. Throwing armor sets will, however, damage all things in a five radius, 
Extremely useful, enormous damage early on. Yep. Um, they do splash damage, Brain of Cthulhu. Yep. Um, this doesn't say if it does damage to me. I mean, they only do 60, so I can throw one at myself, I think. Famous last words. I don't know. How many, how many, how much do they cost? Uh, oh, they're fucking free. They're free. Um, all right. Let's see if we do damage to myself. Fuck! They do damage to yourself. Okay, I just have to aim well. Um, I'll recall if I feel tense and just get out. And then my vertebrae. Perfect. And I think I, it's just the vertebrae and the powder that I bring in. Here we go. Limb Biscuit, love the music tonight. Hell yeah. Okay, I need to remember I don't have my fall damage safety on. Sticky nades are a valid option. That doesn't really help me. Do they do more damage? I don't think so. I think they just stick. And I'm going to be throwing them right at the, the brain. Oh my god, those arrows are sick nasty. Good code is generally fewer lines, though? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this is in, like, scary mode right now. Hopefully I don't have any, like, tumble spooky things. I think it's the desert that's scary with the wind. But I could see it being scary here, too. I, I don't know. I can't see shit. <laughs> it's crazy how far the crimson is for me. Normally, crimson is not this close. Okay. Woo! We're good. We're good. We're good. Relax. I shouldn't willy-nilly use these arrows. But they look so pretty. So we've got arrows. We've got nades. I'm really scared I'm going to kill myself with the nades. I can't believe there's no crimson until the past the dungeon. We'll get to coding soon. All of this has just been prepped for this boss. And then we just need to be ready, ready to teleport out. How's my armor? I've got 24 armor, which is pretty low. I'm really scared. That's okay. We can leave early. We don't have to kill it. We don't have to kill the boss. The second things go awry, we can leave. We can leave... We can leave when we're worried. We can leave when we're worried. I want those worms. I don't have my bug net. We can leave early. We can leave early. Don't hesitate to leave early. Don't forget to use buffs. Holy shit, those things hit hard. Why is that hitting so fucking hard? Um... Oh, we only have one. I mean, I can I can break the things. Wow. Wow, the reach on this is insane. I guess I got a good one. Savage. I don't think that's Biss. I do have Biss bow, though. This bow is disgusting. Unfortunately, I'm just about to replace it. I would like to farm the, these chimeras. Until I get the banner, just in case they come out during the fight. Cry Crimeas? Are these Crimeas? Ch Chimeras? Uh, 
I only have one summon. Obviously, I can break orbs if I have to. Oh, there's a there's a, a chest in there, isn't there? How many how many of these have I killed? Does the bestiary tell me how many I've killed? Um. I forget that these... Oh, the monster meats. 33% on the vertebrae. I always... I, honestly, I love games with in-game bestiaries where you build it up. This doesn't show me how many kills I have, does it? I've got to be pretty close on those. Like, I'm probably almost at 100 on blood crawlers. I don't know. Did anyone see... Um, bestiary. How does the bestiary work? One kill, 10, 25 is item drop list. Oh, they drop burgers? Um, okay. So we're at least halfway there. Honestly, spawns are probably better up top where I don't have it well lit. So we can start heading up top. Holy dick, these hit hard. I feel like that hits way harder than I would have expected. I'm also starting to do a little bit of damage. The nookie. All right, good soon, chat. I know it's been rough. I just like this game too much. I sh I shouldn't have started playing this game on stream. That was that was the that was the mistake. I know I'm not close on those face dudes, but they don't really spawn much down there. One more level, Mom. Mom, I can't pause! Fuck! Hit the wrong button. That's all right. That's a big F, chat. Put your Fs in chat for wrong button. It's okay. I have that on literally the easiest button to hit for that exact reason. I would rather do that accidentally than, uh, <laughs> than not do it at all. That is my, that is my get out of jail free card. Are you gonna stream or make video? Uh, are you gonna stream or make videos about OS development that you're doing currently? No, I'm not. No, that's that's a spicy OS for spicy things. That's a project. I don't want to spend half my time fucking making it stream friendly. Not fun. I don't even know if I'm gonna open source Alicado anymore. It's too good, man. It's too fucking good. I hate it. I, I hate that it's too good, but it is. <laughs> Do I need these for anything? No, I need the dudes in the ground, but I don't know how to farm them. What is Must doing with the Twitter thing? Uh... Stock manipulation? <laughs> it's like the only the only way that he knows how to do money make money? Stock manipulation? Question mark? Misle misleading uh misleading reports? General scumminess? 
Does a la carte only work in your custom OS? It works on everything. It will eventually be ported only to my custom OS. My, I think my custom OS is going to be a subset of Core, though. So I think I'm still going to be able to write libraries that do work. Um, I hope that I'll be able to write libraries that still work with, um, uh, with libcore. I, I don't want to make it so I can't write, like, libraries that work in my OS and other places. That would be pretty cringe. But, I mean, if I have to, I'll do it. But I, I should be able to make everything work in that. I'm still going to use result. Ah, you know what? I'm probably not going to use results. I don't like results. Ah, maybe I will use results. It, it kind of depends. I mean, I have to have allocations. I have to have thread local storage for um, error stacks. Is really all I need. I could have results be like, where they go through and then maybe question marks like actually pushes them to stacks something like that i don't know i haven't fully decided that i just know that i want no panics no panics and perfect air stacks that's my plan Air stacks are going to be hot. That's no panics and, and air stacks is what I did in my, uh, in my like final C operating system. And I miss it so much. Like that makes me miss writing C. Cause it just, it just was supremely better. I don't know. Yeah. I might not even fucking care about libcore compatibility. I might, I might just start writing code for myself for my own OS. I, every time I write code for anything else, I regret it. Like, feels bad, but it, it's fucking true, dude. Like when I, I ported, uh, I ported the last version of Vec Emu, or I guess like the second to last version, because there's been like ten versions since then, uh, to Linux, and that was a massive fucking mistake. It was just worthless on Linux. I know it wasn't worthless. It was still really good, but I couldn't do like fast page table stuff. I couldn't make good data structures. Couldn't have fast networking. Couldn't have low latency operations. It just, dude, Linux sucks ass. Woo. If you never have any bugs, it'll never panic. Yeah, Rust just panics a little too much. For my tastes. I'm actually okay with allocations being panics. Um, but I need to get out of here. I was fine, but I would have had to fight my way out of there, and that would have been a little spicy. So we're going to head back, and uh, actually we're going to make this last powder, and then I think we're ready. To dump Tesla stock? No, to just fuck around with Twitter stock, because he has he's a massive uh, shareholder of Twitter stock. Um, bam, bam, bam. make the powder, I think, at the bench. Yeah. Now I got 50. Damn, I'm 10 shy of uh, being able to make it. Isn't the problem of Linux sucks ass is that Linux is trying to cater to everything? All your OSs are trying to solve a very specific problem? Yeah. I mean... <sighs> Here's the problem with a lot of open source software. It's not that it's trying to cater to everything. It's catering to a very small vocal minority. And that means that, you know, incomplete features and changes are going in because like one dude wanted it. Like one dude one day had one frustration but they know how to develop and they're comfortable doing kernel development. So they make a patch and patches rarely get rejected from the kernel. I mean, patches get rejected on the basis of like, they're shitty or low quality, but like IOU ring is a, is a great example of something that's just like kind of jammed and rushed in there. 
and it's adding a fuck ton of attack surface and a lot of risk for what? Like, I don't think there is a single piece of software on my computer that uses IOU ring. But I can guarantee you that IOU ring probably is composed of like 20 or 30 percent of Linux LPE O'Day in the past like year or two. Um, obviously, yeah, you can build that, you know, build it with that, that not in your kernel, but that no one runs fucking custom built kernels. Like that argument is so fucking invalid. Um, but don't get me wrong. IOU ring is great. Like IOU ring is the sort of shit that I write my own OS to have and stuff like that should be more standardized, but IOU ring is not going in there because everyone wants it. It's going in there because like a couple people want it in there and they're jamming that shit in there. And of course, if, if you have anything that has ever had a talk about it or you have like, if, if you've given a talk about it at a conference or it increases perf of Linux, it's getting fucking accepted. And um, a lot of people like to say that Linux is like, oh, it's not the corporate OS. Linux is the most corporate OS. Like, if you look at basically any fucking patch in the Linux tree, you are going to see Broadcom devs, Intel devs, uh, Microsoft devs, Red Hat devs. And all of them are in there jamming in the shit that makes them a little bit more money that year. It's jamming in shitty drivers, shitty API mods so that their shitty drivers work with their shitty APIs, adding shitty schedulers that make your their fake made up bench numbers look really good and changing defaults of things. It's just, dude, it, it's literally every fucking thing in that kernel is just corporate bullshit. To, to sell products, it's, I don't know. I don't like it. There's, there's a big difference of generic where, like, you try to give people the primitives to do what they need to do and Linux generic, which is not giving people the primitives of what to do. It is making very specific things for a billion use cases. And the way that I would design like a Linux style system is like you 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 gotta use the fucking core APIs that you can't fucking change the API every goddamn week. Do you like Serenity OS more than Linux? Not really, no. <laughs> I just, I just don't really believe in general purpose operating systems. I don't think they really have a place. There's my hundredth blood crawler, and I still don't have my hundredth fucking. Uh, chim Chimera? Isn't the problem of, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, on a custom OS, you don't have to give a fuck about security, so you avoid cash thrashing? I mean, you can avoid that on, on generic systems as well. You just need to have good support for pinning the threat, pinning the cores, and disabling preemption. Did this just like Ubuntu build everything in the kernel by default? Yes. Yes. Unless you're building your own custom kernel, I can guarantee you that your kernel has almost every fucking feature imaginable enabled. Do you personally run Debian? No. No. I, I don't like running Linux from 2005. Um, I like Debian more than Ubuntu, but no, I run Gentoo. You yeah, haven't been using Temple OS enough. Temple OS is uh, fascinating, to put it lightly. I don't know. Do we just do this boss? I mean, we're not going to fucking get... We're not going to get this banner, are we? We're like probably like one or two kills away, but they're just, they just don't spawn here, so it just doesn't really matter anyways. Okay. Uh... uh we can do two of these spawns, so we can leave if we're getting uncomfortable, okay? And let's just put down our, our, our stuff. And then I think we're ready. So we'll put down a campfire. 
And we'll put down a heart lantern. And I think that's everything. Okay. Okay. Buffs active. Boss active. Grenades prepared. Butthole clenched. Holy shit, these grenades are busted! Okay, these do 13 damage per. So I really need to groom these into good shapes so I get good nades. There we go. We already have tissue sam samples coming in. We have done some damage to ourselves. Oh my god, I don't have my fucking right arrows on. Fuck me. Oh, I should have kept going, but I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we can do here. World record pace. Yeah, that was going fine. I just like was not, not adequately prepared, and I don't want to go into that fight unprepared. So we do have enough powders to make an own, and we can let's make a thing to break the stuff. So first of all, let's see if we can make anything now that we have. A, we have a couple tissue samples, not too many, but that might, oh, you need 20 for this. Seven defense, six, six. Oh, we don't want to break the set bonus. That would make us lose. Okay, we can, we can now make a pickaxe. Uh, we'll keep that if we do die. And then... Okay. All right, so we at least were able to make the basics. But yeah, we can just keep doing that if we have to. Um... And crimptain bars, let's just make some space. And then we can go right back. Tissue samples, blast these into here. Uh, okay. I think we're good. Why do people use Arch? Because uh, it's bleeding edge. It's actually a pretty good distro. Really good documentation, really good guides, really good wiki, really good support. Uh, it's just... It's one of the better binary distros for power users. I would say it is the best distro for power users of Linux. I would say right now the best distros are Pop OS if you are a basic user. Ubuntu is absolutely garbage. Don't use fucking Ubuntu. It's fucking trash. It's unbelievably ass. It's so bloated. It's so slow. Apt is super bad. Snap packages are so fucking awful. You now have like four five second load times for fucking browsers because because they're in snap packages which is it's just so fucking cringe dude stop doing fucking containers and docker and app images stop fucking stop holy shit like if you're worried about dll hell statically link your shit like the, the if if you can't make your shit work on two different fucking versions of libc, give up. Your code sucks. Like, what the fuck are you possibly using that wasn't introduced in C89 and KNRC? Like, l literally, what the fuck API do you need in libc that is so goddamn glibc version 9.69 specific? Fuck off. Just... Just take the 2% the perf hit on the one in a million branch case and move on with your fucking life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, so goddamn annoying, dude. Once again, it's just another fucking quick rapid turnaround deployment don't care about end user. It's just all about what makes it easier, cheaper, less maintenance for developers. 
so that the managers can pocket more money because they pay fewer people to test, debug, and port. Fuck yeah. <sighs> I hate this fucking industry, dude. Docker is the best way to compile stuff. I, I hate people who use Docker to compile stuff. I hate it so much. It's, it's such a fucking cope. I understand why people do it. I also absolutely hate it. All right, let's go this time for sure. Let's go, let's go, baby. Let's fucking go. We're crushing it. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! Stage two! Stage two! How are we doing on push and cooldown? I think pretty good. Ooh, I don't want to be here! How's my potion cooldown looking? Let's go! Ease! Easy! Whew! Honestly, that wasn't bad at all. <laughs> it's really the first phase, but grenades just fuck on that, dude. Four crit has a chance to create illusions and dodge. Meteorite has landed. Let's fucking go, dude. Let's fucking go. It looks like I stashed away my other grenades. Otherwise, I'd do another one right now. A fucking pog. Oh, let's loot all of the... We should loot all the stuff from the boss. Fucking E Z clap. Yeah, let's put that down. Yeah, let's fucking go. I guess we'll we'll take that back home. Um, ba -ba -bum. has a chance to create illusions and dodge and attack. Temporarily increases after the dodge. May confuse nearby enemies after being struck. Let's try that instead of hard claws. I don't know what that does. But the move speed, I mean, we're now in like a super move speed set. Doctor is nice if I want to set up a server really fast. Yeah, once again, it, it's it's convenient, but it's terrible for end users. And that that's that's the thing with Docker. Docker is basically how you you just give up on having a build system that is actually usable, maintainable, and supportable, and you're just like, fuck it. We're gonna build on this specific version that we checked in, and we're never gonna look at it or change it again in our lives, because, and then over time, it's just going to drift further and further from usability. Should we summon this with 24 nades? That's maybe a bit aggro. The other needs got dropped off, unfortunately. Let's go get her. We'll pick up our nades, and then we'll go back. We'll kill the boss, and then we'll write some code. Okay, chat? I didn't expect that to go so well. I thought we were going to have to leave. I didn't think we were going to get a uh, kill on it. We're so fucking good, chat. Uh... I have 
have basically all my sooms. So let's just grab some nades. Three ninety nine. Here we go. There we go. I only use Docker when I want to cloud host. Yeah, another another great example of shit. Cloud. <laughs> Who needs the right code? Only Terraria. I mean, what's after this? It's really not very fun for the next while after this. It's really going down, getting molten gear, and then uh, once I have molten gear, I do the dungeon. The dungeon's actually really fun. I don't know. I mean, we could just not write code. It is the weekend. I don't have to write code. <laughs> We could, we could just play Terraria and rant. Sounds pretty good to me. There's the meteor. Meteor, I think, is magic damage. The meteor armor set. Let's hope Oxide kills Cloud. It won't. Oxides, uh, I say this out of disappointment and not out of, out of anything against Oxide. Oxide is doing the right thing so they'll never make money. They're making good hardware, they're making good software. I mean, they don't pay for shit, but I don't know what their like stock options are. So they can maybe get a little bit back because they pay so little. But, like, they're not slimy enough, man. I don't think they're slimy enough to compete and sell in the current uh, tech ecosystem. I think they're just going to get bullied out of the market by people who just treat them like shit and, and overlook their, um, their strengths. And I think people are just going to shit on them without actually providing any value. So it, it sucks because it's 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 not really a problem with um with oxide. I think they're they're doing great things, but it's just that that's not how you make money in tech, man. You make money in tech by selling the same shit every year for fifty years with no innovation, no improvements. Well, your improvements are you port everything to JavaScript so that you can hire cheaper devs and ship code faster and say you have features faster it's not a like no one wants no one wants good quality code performance reliability testing no one gives a fuck about any of that they want quick easy dirty cheap why make a good product when you can make money instead like i i have nothing but the utmost respect for nearly every engineer working at that fucking company like almost everyone there is just well known for being S tier level programmers. And and I do not say that lightly. Like I, I think pretty much every programmer is absolute dog shit. Oxide actually has some of the very few exceptionally good programmers. And that's not to diminish people who are learning. That's to diminish people who have learned. Um Oh yeah, I now have this heart thing. The problem is most people stop learning. And it makes sense. There's really no reason to learn if you don't make more money unless you get subordinates. So I, I, I understand why people stop learning. It's just such a, it's such a fuck system, dude. People hate technical people. All these big tech companies don't want technical solutions. They want management solutions. They want to hear we can... We can take a bunch of student engineers and put them in a room with this manager and they'll make them do a bunch of things magically. It's, it's a fucking lie. It's literally a lie, but they buy it every goddamn time. That's, uh, that's the downside when good technical people are pretty much always autistic and managers are basically uh, full-time uh exploiters of of social weaknesses uh it's not great it's pretty fucking sad really depressing actually you 
God damn it. Hit the wrong button. All right, whatever. <laughs> Is Hots S tier? I don't know. I mean, he's... I don't think he writes good code, but I do think that he produces good... How do I how do I phrase this? I don't think I don't think his code is good, but I don't think anyone's code is good except for my own. Which is not an ego thing. It's just it's just that everyone's code sucks, including my own. Um, I'm just most comfortable with my own. His code quality isn't great, but his his prioritization of features, his selection of features, his his dream. Uh, like basically like having the ideas of the project in the first place as well as um, His dev speed is phenomenal Can't can't argue with that um, Basically good product design good uh, Dev speed good architecture Good ideas Not the best code, but that's okay. I don't think I don't think he's trying to like I am judging his code for something he's not trying to make it be. Right? Like like there there's a there's a big difference between like trying to architect these like masterpiece pieces of software that are not really to make money or to prove a point, which is most of what I do is just out of curiosity and like I love doing that. Um He's more interested in the end result than I am. And and pretty much everyone is, right? That's not that's not a neg at at hots. That's just me being defective. Hots can deliver results. Yes, absolutely. I was in pain watching him solve easy task on hacker rank for six hours. I don't know what hacker rank is. But yeah, I I, I have a lot of respect for GeoHot. I think he's a uh, Fantastic researcher. He's got a, a brilliant mind on his head. He obviously, like, understands how to do things really well. Really well. Really quickly. Being S tier at anything is just do it. Yeah. And that's the problem is, like, you can't really become S tier at programming unless you do it as a hobby. Because you will be forced into management very quickly. Like, this, the second you get to, like, senior level, like, that's kind of the end of being technical. Once you're principal, like, and, and this is where, like, everyone fucking disagrees with me. They're like, oh, well, there's a management track and there's a, there's a technical track and they're two different scales. And it's like, yeah, the management track is for people in management. It's for... Dealing with, like, HR-style management issues, like, keeping people motivated, having one-on-ones, making sure people aren't upset, making sure people are working on the right things, are placed on the right teams, more of the human side of things. The technical track, principle plus, is all lead. It's all tech lead. And tech lead is management. It just fucking is. I'm sorry. You can put it on the technical track. You can say it's a technical thing. You can say that they're IC roles because nobody is under you and you're a tech lead and you're just steering the vision. No, fuck off, dude. You're literally like instilling your vision to, into everyone on the team. You're constantly talking with all the more junior members. You're training them. You're teaching them. You're like helping people build and grow, which is fantastic. I'm not saying this isn't a good role. You cannot continue learning and growing in that role as a, like a, a technical. Obviously, you can learn and grow at a non-zero rate, but that rate is arguably below the rate of like improvement of the industry. Like if, if you go from writing code 40 hours a week into writing code five to 10 hours a week, and then you're working on architecture and leadership and mentorship and meetings and justifying your existence and pitching ideas and switching orgs and reorging and schmoozing with people and sucking dicks so you don't get fired and like f fighting for promotions doing all of the political shit you're just gonna fall behind 
because you can't you can't really stay innovative when you spend that much time doing internal temporal politics because the like yes getting good at politics is absolutely a skill and it's absolutely valuable over time however it's politics are are always situational whereas a lot of technical stuff is like more ground truthy it's like have you ever written something that can solve routing traffic in a certain situation yes you've done that okay now you can do it again way faster in the future you can now teach people while doing it you can probably do it without much effort but the political side of things it's more just kissing ass and making sure that things go your way more often um which is extremely important not saying that's not important uh but it does take away from technical growth it, it absolutely does and i think it's one of the reasons why there are not many people out there who i consider very technical do you need to program 40 hours a week learning new things when you did programming professionally 10 years 10 plus years yes because the average person i have met who has 20 years of experience in a lead role does not know fuck all about software development architecture performance optimization or politics or management maybe it's different at smaller companies it's absolutely different at smaller companies yes it is is the tech lead the person architecting the solution um usually yeah do you struggle on team projects when you don't get to archi architect it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why Google rejected me on this most recent time because I passed the interview with Flying Colors and then I had a meeting with like the, the team um, and they were basically like, how would you like to contribute to our Python wrappers of AFL? And I basically said, I don't want to. And, and I know that sounds like really egotistical and fucky, but I, I said it in all the politically correct ways and it's just like, that would not be an effective use of my skill set. And if that's not what you're looking for, then it's also not what I would be happy doing, right? But yeah, like, that's another big issue is you're, at the end of the day, let's, let's be honest, you're, you're paid based on your age and your last job. And my last job was a senior at Microsoft, which was not the correct level for me. When at every single job I've been yelled at, not yelled at, but I've been like, I've gotten in trouble for being too harsh in interviews, not too harsh. I've always been very polite and nice in interviews, but too picky in interviews and way too competitive and picky with my peers. Um, yeah, maybe if it's not fair for me to expect my peers to be able to do what I do, maybe I'm not their fucking peer. Like, I know that sounds egotistical and vain, but it's not really fair for me to either be competing for the same bonus bonuses and basically like pipping other people who are not at my level, but at my same role. Basically, if you're 28 years old at Microsoft and you have like four or five years of experience, you are in the exact same role I was in. Even though most of those people maybe started programming their second, third year of university maybe programmed five or 10 hours a week during university, then got a job where they maybe did a little bit of programming and security for four years. That's the exact same role and exact same pay as me, who's been, I've been writing software probably 60 to 80 hours a week for the past 20 years. And I've been doing security related things for probably 15 or 16. Um... I'm paid entirely based on age in my previous role. It, it sucks, but like I can hop jobs and they would be like, okay, now we can put you in principal because you were senior at Microsoft. Well, I should have been fucking principal at Microsoft. In fact, I learned this recently and this sounds really fucky. And I, I know whenever I talk about these things, it like, it, it's super egotistical and I feel like a douchebag. Um, uh, in my very first job, I like got 
management got mad at me because I basically said like we should not hire some dude uh, as like a principal engineer because he like didn't know like half the shit that I knew. And it, it's not like I, I understand. Like I have always been aware and I feel like I communicate relatively well and I, I understand people's strengths and weaknesses. I've never been the kind of person of like, if you don't know this very specific detailed thing, you're, you're dumb. You don't know what I know. But like after a long interview process, there are a lot of things where it's like, I feel like they're weak in these routes. I feel like they don't understand these security things. I feel like they don't understand these programming things. I don't really see, like I could see you being a really good dev and not good at security. I could see you really good at security, not good at dev. Maybe a mix of the two that makes you really valuable, even though you're not great at either of them. Um, and basically I said, we shouldn't hire this person as principal. And I got told, well, you shouldn't expect this person to know anything that you know that's not fair. And I was five levels below them. <laughs> and I found out recently, literally six months ago, from one of the people that I look up to, who was part of this like massive interview process, um, the first job that I had in security, all of the technical engineering people wanted to hire me as principal which would have been like a five or a six level position when I was 19. Instead, they gave me the most entry level one position. Of course I took it and I took it for the exact reasons that they offered it to me because they knew I'd take it. And that latched me in permanently to from there, I, you can get like one promo every time you switch jobs, right? I know this because I tried to jump more than two promos by looking around the industry and I've decided to just do my own company because it's not going to fucking happen. Um, basically, that, that permanently locked me in to where I am, which means that I get my every two to four years, I can jump jobs and I can get one promo or I can get one promo by sweating and being internal to a company. And that has basically put me on par with everyone else in the industry who came out of school four years after I started doing dev or four years after I, I entered the industry. So it's, it's just fucked. And, and that's why I'm so salty. And that's why I complain about big tech so much. And that's why I complain about management so much because I had the realization like two years ago that I cannot exist at big companies. And, and I know that sounds like, oh, boohoo, go to small companies. But the problem is, it's not me being, it's not even me being greedy. Of course, I'm greedy because I know that they have the most money and can pay the most. Like, that's obviously a part of it. But the other part is that I know that I would absolutely be more productive if I were in a position where I could spend all of my time working on hard technical problems and having a good support group of management and HR and sales to handle making sure that the stuff that I do gets work done by the right people, is seen by the right people, is sold to the right people, that we can hire the right people to, to work on the ideas that I have and want to work on, I know that that is way more efficient and way more effective than me going off and doing my own thing where I have to do all of those things myself. Like I can't hire people right now because I don't necessarily have a stable enough thing to hire people. And thus I have to do, take on a little bit more work than I probably should. And that detracts from some of the more impactful things I have, which is my pure technical skill set. Like, Companies should be bending over backwards for me to be working 40 hours a week on pure technical architecture problems. I will gladly teach, train, lead, do all those sorts of things. Um, but the problem is, my last job was a senior at Microsoft. I cannot take a principal or senior role at a company. I, I just can't. I literally can make double that cash working 10 hours a fucking week doing my own thing so what like it's just so to me it makes no sense that with one year of biz dev 
I'm making almost double what any big tech company has ever offered me when I have to do all of my sales, all of my contracting, all of my research, all of my biz dev, all of my HR, all of the bullshit, and somehow I'm still significantly more valuable in that environment than in an environment where there's managers and HR and salespeople and advertisers and people taking all of that work off my shoulder where they can really exploit my actual skill set for money. Yeah, I think in reality, once again, the only thing, and I, I know this sounds so fucking bad, the only thing that makes sense is that companies are only willing to pay me based on my age and my previous role. And that's it. And my, I should have been a principal when I was 19. So I'm probably like four or five levels below where I should be. <laughs> or like three or four levels below where I should be. And there is no way that I'm ever going to catch up to that. So I just got to do what I got to do now. Most jobs have nothing to do with the day-to-day. -day. It's how well you can coddle upper management's balls. It's pretty fucking true. It's, it's, unfortunately, a lot of technical work is just p-hacking. It's coming up with like a bunch of fucking bullshit, um, bullshit numbers. So like, it, it's, I have this like pretty overarching belief that most people aren't actually causing the results that they're getting. And a lot of this is because, first of all, people don't really get into, like, measure, measuring, like, metrology sort of stuff. People get into, like, metrics. And there's a big fucking difference between metrics, which is just what makes me look good and justify more money, and what actually are my impacts. And I think at the end of the day, like a lot of people are just doing random shit. And then due to random company fluctuations, they think that what they did is what was an improvement. So they get promotions based off of that. And in reality, like a, a lot of shit that people do just isn't really providing any value. That like, once again, that's not to say they're not valuable engineers or managers or whatever. It just means that they're like pee hacking and coming up with basically arbitrary statistics that make them look good when in reality it's like if you didn't exist there's a chance all of the same growth would have happened like maybe the reason that defender got really big traction is not actually because of some crazy marketing management push it's because some dude TikToked about the right thing something went fucking viral and now people are talking about it. like shit like that there there are so many variables it's, I never went to college. I've never done stats beyond high school stats. But it is so fucking cringe to me. Like, basically all business metrics are like N equals 2. 10,000 variables. You controlled for one of the 10,000 variables, meaning that there's 9,999 9 uncontrolled values, and you're, like, justifying your existence off of that shit. And it's just so cringe. It's so cringe. <laughs> Four or five levels above is a pure political role? Yeah, I mean, basically principle is a pure political role. And yeah, I had to, I had to turn down a, a fun offer that I actually had. Um, I don't know, like the person probably watches my stream at a company that I'd love to work for. And I had to turn it down on the basis of like basically responsibility and, and pay. And it feels like shit, but I really want to write up an email and be like, I, I could have passed this interview and gotten the same job when I was like 18 or 19 so by offering this to me, you're basically disregarding the past 10 years of my research. Further, it's not a dig on other people, but I write way more code than basically everyone else. I spend a lot more time documenting and polishing my code. You see the shit I write on stream? Like, I comment my code pretty well for code that is never going to go into production or even be open sourced. I... I spend a lot of time trying to improve, figure out 
better uh, paradigms. I spent a lot of time just reading through Rust docs to look for like, is there more idiomatic, a new API? Is there something that is a better way of expressing the thing that I want to express? I do a lot of things related to performance and optimization and all of that sort of stuff. And unfortunately, I'm just judged based on my age. And that's not really fair because I, I've been doing dev, first of all, for like eight to 10 years longer than most people my age. Actually, yeah, yeah, probably about that. And second of all, of all of those like 15 combined years, I've probably spent three or four times more time programming and probably a significant more time designing systems and architecting and actually thinking through better solutions. Um... So, I, I don't know. Like, that's my rant. Like, it, it's, it's just, it's unfortunate. It's one of the reasons why I, I will always advocate that people have, like, a healthy work-life balance. Because if you work 80 hour weeks, you're going to be treated as equivalent to your peers. Uh, with the exception of internal promotions, if you work 80 hour weeks for work related things, including the politics, then you might get promotions faster than other people. Totally fine. But still, if you work three or four times harder than someone else and get three or four times more impact or more done, you're not going to get promoted three or four times faster. Like most companies have like a 2x margin where you can get promoted like twice as fast as someone else. But beyond that, it like, the machinery literally cannot support it because like you were you it would just get brought up to someone that's like didn't we just promote this person two years ago no right and it has nothing to do with the actual impact or value it, it's it's really just politics but if you do things in your own time hobbies now hobbies are great for getting into a career or a job like doing ctfs to get into security massive that might be the difference between a company not even remotely considering you and you being like th their favorite hire of the year. Um, but if you do like me, if you do 40 to 60 hours a week of programming outside of work, don't expect to ever get compensated for that because you will be compared equivalently to the average developer of your age of that role, right? So if the average person is like working remote and working actually five to 10 hours a week and you're working 80 hours a week doing shit on your free time and work at work, yeah, you're just gonna end up being really pissed off that you're not growing eight times faster than them. Uh, why don't you start your own company? That's what I did. That's, that's my complaint is I, I don't like that I had to start my own company because it's, it's just not... It's, it's, not, it's not the most Nash route. Theoretically, I could provide way more value at a company that valued me and built structure around me to allow me to excel in what I do. But instead, I have to run a fucking company, which honestly is not that much work. It's less work than a fucking junior level role at a company because I have, what, four hours of meetings a, a, a month? Um, But... You know, it's still stressful. It's still not trivial. Maybe jobs on the side of high performance compute will treat you better. Once again, here's a great example. I had a, a, a technical fellow or distinguished engineer, forget, uh, distinguished engineer um, introduce me to Amazon and say like, hey, you should work on some dank shit with us. You're clearly really good. And so they put me in contact with the recruiter because everything has to go through recruiters. And I was like, yeah, I think I've outgrown security. And a lot of that is, once again, <laughs> it's a pay thing. But um, most security teams for binary security, the realm of security that I do, even at massive companies like Facebook, Amazon, Google, these companies, they have like 10 20 person security teams. They might have a hundred people doing binary security across all their orgs, but each team is probably like 20 people. 
which means that you're going to have a manager that gets paid as if there's 20 people under him, which is going to be like usually principal level management scale, which means that they're going to be able to only hire prince or below. Maybe exceptionally, they could hire someone like one level above them. So ultimately, I was like, dude, I've outgrown security. Like, I love security. I have a lot of value in security. But unfortunately, since the fact that people above you have to be paid more than the people below you, for some reason, um, there will not be a binary security team at the org that will have someone who is running it who can pay me enough. So, um, basically... After having this conversation with Intel, they're like, mm, but your last job, you were security. We're going to stick with that because that will be an easier sell. And I was like, okay, bye. Once again, all that matters is your previous role. It, it doesn't fucking matter that my optimization and my perf code is probably some of the best in the world, even though I'm also a very good security person. My perf shit is probably way more valuable to a company, um, especially since it's building code. But no one wants to take on the risk because we're just going to hire you as one level above what you were in your old security role because no one's going to ask any questions and it's easy. <sighs> the problem is if you... A few people are like you and the system is designed for the majority. That is true. Um, another big part is like... <laughs> I come off also as kind of egotistical when I say these things because they're judging me based on my previous role, right? If I were to say these things in an interview, albeit politically, um, and I can, I can play politics pretty fucking well, Every time I have been in a position where I'm talking to someone way up the food chain, they have always asked for me to come back extracurricularly. Not like, hey, can you come back and explain this again? It's like, hey, can you just be around more? Every fucking time. Every time I've done that. For VPs, for like CEOs, for fucking technical fellows, for distinguished engineers. Every goddamn time I've had that opportunity, it's always been massive success. But... If you go into an interview and you're like, yeah, I'm really looking to get like a technical fellow level role. First of all, they don't hire those roles in the first place. Second of all, they're going to be like, you were senior, fuck you. You're an egotistical piece of shit that doesn't bode well for you. It's like, no, I'm just probably massively underpaid. And I'm just, I would just like to get to the conversation. But, but yeah, it's, a lot of it is A, I, I do this full time, and by full time, I mean all of my life is spent doing this work, um, which is not fair. Like, how is a recruiter going to think that some 29-year-old kid has, like, equivalent 30 years of experience? <laughs> They're just not. They're going to be like, oh, this dude probably has five or six years of experience. Okay, we'll treat him exactly like that. They're, they're a cookie cutter person. They're going to go under a manager who's going to tell them what to do. They don't have any good ideas of their own. They can't architect or design anything. They just need their hand held and they'll just, they'll do what they're told. That's what we want. So yeah, it, it's, why don't you do consulting? That's effectively what I do. I do contracting now. I'm actually working a couple different contracts. Years of experience without passion means nothing. Ugh. Unfortunately, that is so true. But, but people get so mad about that. People get so mad about the fact that like they're five hours a week of actually doing work and 35 hours of, of twiddling their thumbs or just like work-life balance. We're just totally fine. That's fucking great. Like do your work-life balance you are probably a way better off person than I will ever be and way happier and way more successful. That's fucking great. But don't for the second fucking think that you like actually have that experience because I would say right now in security, I would say in security to maintain your percentile if you somehow could rank people, which you cannot. You cannot objectively judge or rank people, and that's, once again, why, like, leak code in interviews are a fucking scam. But if, theoretically, you could, like, 
put yourself in a fucking percentile to maintain that percentile in security probably as long as you're in not in the like the top 10 percent, then it gets really fucking hard but if you're just like an average security person you probably need 10 to 20 hours a week of like actual decent technical work to stay at your same percentile and that's not because you're bad or you learn slow or whatever it's because there are so many people out there who are sweating their asses off to get these roles and like a lot of people oh that's i've never seen this how do i how do i use the kite oh fuck yeah um this this industry changes really fast there's a lot of difficult difficult work and you basically you just fall behind like on the biggest problem is your past experience i would even say this for development even though a lot of people would disagree your experience beyond like 10 wall clock years often just doesn't matter it's on irrelevant tech with irrelevant strategies with irrelevant business plans with irrelevant monetization strategies so what really matters is like how much you have learned in the past moving exponential average bias towards like the most recent couple years. You can fall behind so fast in security and even in development. That's why a lot of people hate Rust. Like it sucks, but it's kind of true. One of the big reasons a lot of people hate Rust is because they don't have the time or effort to learn a new language and they view it as an attack on their career. Sorry. It's fucking true. Just it just is. Um <laughs> You can't even get the interview sometimes due to ineffective recruiters. Yeah. Yeah, that's not it. It's overcomplicated and ugly. That's another point. I'm not saying that that's everyone's reason to not write Rust. I'm saying for the like people with 30 years experience who say Rust is ass without understanding any properties of the language. They just don't want to lose their C++ job where they haven't learned anything or done anything for the past 30 years. Um, you can have criticisms of Rust. That's totally fucking fine. I don't mind that at all. I shit on Rust all the time. <laughs> I'll shit on Rust all fucking day long. But I I'm talking a about a specific type of person who's often in those leadership roles or those management roles because, once again, age, wall clock time. <laughs> the mass layoffs are on the horizon. I don't want to say it because I feel bad for the people getting laid off and I, I really wish them the best. The big tech companies have basically positioned themselves where managers are the only people who get paid and they get paid based on the number of people under them, not based on their impact by the number of people under them. So it just encourages them to just fucking hire willy nilly. So when the cash is flush, you spend all of your hiring or you spend all of your profit on hiring dollars. First of all, it's a tax deductible expense. You hire as many people as you can. All your management now has more people under them, more impact, more scale. Scale has nothing to do with impact. It's number of people. <laughs> Once again, these are only for big political companies. For smaller companies, almost none of these things I'm saying apply. <laughs> 30 years of carbon experience, yeah. Wait, we can complain about rust? What if they hear us? I don't know. We shit on Rust all the time, dude. It's got plenty of problems. It's got plenty of issues. I mean, now it's just becoming Amazon's language, and it's uh, it's gonna start to turn into Linux. AKA, it's just gonna have shit thrown into it. <laughs> I have such trouble architecting my project in Rust. That's a good and a bad thing. Um, oftentimes when people say they have problems architecting their stuff in rust it often means that they architected things that were never sound in c and c plus plus like like top down bottom up sort of like structure of like 
who had references to who at a given time. A, a lot of times when people get frustrated with Rust, they find out that, uh, yeah, basically everything they've ever done has been invalid. <laughs> Oop damage brain, yeah, yeah. Prototyping and refactoring in Rust just takes too long in my experience. I agree. Unfortunately, and this is why, this is, this is my biggest fear of Rust's adoption. Rust is not supposed to be an easy language. Rust is supposed to be the language that allows you to extract all of the performance out of the computer safely and that requires exceptional architecture code and development like practices and knowledge the fact that rust is being picked up by a lot of people who don't necessarily have the skill sets as more of like a faster go or they like the syntax more is really scary to me because it might lead to decreasing the quality of the language um keep rust elite you know hashtag uh, it's really not even meant to be like a gatekeepy thing it's more that rust has a very valuable target audience and i'm concerned like the people who are writing rust like operating systems i think are a great example where you have time to refactor. You have time to spend significantly more effort on upfront design and architecture and thinking things through in a way that you can swap them out, you can replace them, you can refactor them if you have to. Making defined API boundaries. In, in my opinion, Rust is perfect. Rust, in, in, if I were to put it really bluntly, if you think Rust doesn't prototype dev refactor fast enough, you're probably not the right audience for Rust. Now, obviously everyone's gonna disagree because like everyone should be able to use Rust and promote the language and more people the better. But I, at some point I disagree. Um, at some point, Rust is one of the only languages that allows you to write safe, high-performance operating systems with full control. And that is beautiful. I also know that that's not really going to go away. Um, and because of that, it's, it's weird when people complain about it being too hard or too complex. It's literally just C and C++. It is, like, the easiest language that you can have while not abstracting a away those things to make them easier. Like, you can't make... You can't make object management and lifetimes easier than they are in Rust without putting things in garbage collectors or ref counting things by default. And Rust is basically what you get when you try to remove the undefined behavior from C, it's really no higher level than that. It's really no more convoluted than that. So if, if compared to C and C++, you think Rust is harder, that probably just means that you were just not writing sound C and C++. Like, you probably just fucking weren't. Um... Now, if you're a different dev from a different ecosystem, if you're a JavaScript dev or a Go dev or a Python dev or a C-sharp dev, yeah, Rust is going to feel really fucking hard. And yes, it, it, it is. It's because you are taking on responsibility that you've not worked with before. Of course it's going to be harder. Um... Avoid all success at all costs, ask Gal. Hey, how's it going? Sakanshin? Sakanshin? Just refs all, all the things, yeah. Rust punishes you for those habits fast. Yeah, if, I think if you find yourself getting punished by Rust, it likely means that you're trying to do things faster and looser and probably should just write and go. Like, if, if you find yourself wrapping a lot of shit in mutexes and you're using ref cells a lot and you're using arcs a lot, 
Maybe you should just write C++ or Go, or C Sharp or Go. Not C++, don't write C++. Um, <laughs> if you complain about Rust being hard, go back to Python. That's, see, once again, that's, that's not necessarily true. It, it, it depends on what your goals are. And that's why I always have said, I've said it many times on stream before, I don't know how Rust exists. Because it is a language developed for me personally. Like, Rust is literally my language. And that is ridiculous. Because I am such a niche use case or, or like, end user for a programming language. I've, I have never been considered a user of a programming language. I've always been on the back burner. I've always been an afterthought of like, just fucking use C and assembly, you're fine. But Rust is designed for me. It's amazing. But that doesn't mean Rust is a good language for many people. I think Go is just objectively a better language for pretty much every fucking user. Like, who the fuck needs to write... Like... What are the use cases for Rust over Go? Like, sure, theoretically, it has better performance benchmarks. Yeah, but you're not going to fucking write your Rust code in Rust. You're going to write RC ref cell on fucking everything. At which point, yes, theoretically, Rust can produce higher performance code than whatever you're used to in a managed language. But that doesn't mean that then if you write managed style code in Rust, that somehow it's fucking fast now. <laughs> A lot of people just need to turn out code, turn out features, do fucking dev quickly, and like Rust is just not, not, not the right language for them. And that's one problem I have with a lot of people who are critical of Rust, is a lot of time their arguments are just like, it's not the language for you. It just isn't. Like... Oh, well, I don't like Rust because it doesn't have a garbage collector, so I can't express these data structures really easily. Then go use a fucking language with a garbage collector because clearly you don't care about perf. So why the fuck do you care if it has a garbage collector or not? <laughs> cool concept, but such a bad syntax decisions. If your target audience was C and C++ devs, I don't think it was. I think Rust has a beautiful syntax. I do recognize that a lot of people hate on Rust syntax, and I don't understand why. Because I hate C++ syntax. I think C++ is one of the worst looking languages ever. Yet, I switched in the first week of switching from ANSI C to Rust. I love the syntax. I love traits. I love the, the way that you have where clauses. I love the way that you specify trait bounds. I love the way that you do generics. Like, syntactically, I have no complaints about Rust. In fact, I mean, it's probably because there's just sugar for things, but I, I love things like loop labels, which are starting to become more popular, and some languages have always had them. Um... Rust syntax is very expressive. Yeah, I, I love the Rust syntax being expressive. Thank you, RWX Rob, for the 10th. That's 1,000 biddies. Holy shit. Uh, this is why I always mention Gamoza when I talk about actual Rust value. Oh, thank you so much. Turbofish bad. Personally, and, and like I think people like Desu. Desu's a very good Rust dev. Spends a lot of time doing Rust dev. I think he or someone fucking hates the, the turbo fish. Personally, I love it. I don't know why. I like the turbo fish. It, it, it feels good to type. It, it feels nice to read. It's very verbose. I like it. I like it a lot. Turbofish doesn't matter. Okay, it might have been someone else. <laughs> I can't remember who the fuck was saying it. Someone was shitting on Turbofish. It has a cute name, yeah. I don't know. Now, what I do wish is that I could move my fucking Alicado code base 
into using fucking some structure so I can put all my generics. Because I will say, um, I am starting to get annoyed when I want to implement deserialize that I have to write this, this out to then write the body. It, 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 it's, uh, it's a little bad, but it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Do you ever find unwrapped spam looking bad? Bruh, don't unwrap. <laughs> that is on Chongi, boy. It is. It is. And it makes it so hard to add things because then I have to change all the users of it. I can't change a default. Have you heard of Oxide? We actually talked about them earlier. Seems like a nice company for what you're doing. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Oxide. They don't pay enough, unfortunately. I wish they did. I literally could not afford my bills working at Oxide, so I can't work there. Um... That's, that's maybe my fault for taking on, that's basically my mortgage and my internet and I couldn't afford to work at Oxide. And I wouldn't say that I live particularly luxuriously. <laughs> I just, I live in an expensive area is the main issue. Like if, if I joined Oxide, then I, and, and I prepared my life for that then it would be totally fine. But I don't know. No, Oxide would be a great fit for me. I, I, think it, I think it truly would be. Although at this point, probably not. I think I would have been good at Oxide maybe a, a year or two ago. Um, but at this point, they probably have too much established tech. And I, I don't like working with other people's code. Sorry. Like, I, I, know that's, uh, I know that's just me, but it's... I can either be honest about it and work to my strengths, which is working on basically my own code bases and then making really good APIs where they can be zipped up and merged into other things. Or I can lie and pretend like I want to work with other people's code, but I don't want to. I, ju I just don't. Um, sorry, it's not the best use of my time because I will dread doing it and I won't be productive while doing it. You can call it a personality flaw and you can say it's shit, because uh, it is, but I have provided the value and learned the things that I've learned by writing all of my own code. And at this point, that's the reason why I know what I know is because I've written everything from scratch. And at some point, I wonder if writing everything from scratch is actually the most profitable decision I've ever made in my life because it means I have so broad of knowledge and I know it's not even that I know how to do things because you can say like, oh, I learned algorithms in college. I know how to implement everything. I know where all of the mistakes are and I know where all the slow code is and I know what sucks because I've rewritten pretty much everything and every time I've rewritten it, I've usually always found like a 10x perf gain or a scalability gain, or a usability gain, or a code size improvement. There's just, most code is churned out and never looked at again. And I find personally that I have no problem maintaining my own OS, my own bootloader, my own hypervisors, my own emulators, my own JITs, my own ILs, my own compilers. I have no problem maintaining those and actually keeping them up to date with modern standards instead of just building on top of them until they become bloated messes. So I just, I just don't really like working with other people's shit because when you work with other people's shit, here's another problem with working with other people, which this is a problem that I make myself. I cannot give people tasks that I'm blocking on because I'm blocking on them. So I kind of just have to make up shit for people to work on. And usually if I want something, I'm just going to go make it myself because I will spend a hundred hours a week deving it and they'll spend 10 to 20 hours a week deving it. So I just, I really struggle to like divvy things up because, because I'm just going to do it if I need it.
some video lag yeah th there isn't it's the it's the camera i have to it's an obs bug so i have to i have to do this and then we wait a couple seconds and then we switch it back and now it's fixed yay um Speaking of other people's code, John Blow says the entire package ecosystem will implode because of backdoors. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Are you aware that you're yelling? Let's see. Let me catch up on chat. Um, sorry. Bad at reading chat. I know if I was good at reading chat, I'd be a better streamer. How much do they pay? I think like 180k, 185k now. Uh, Control concluded that IPC without shared memory was uh, too slow for his taste back in 2018. Yes, same thing. Um, I don't like shared memory models, but the only exception to that is I allowed shared memory for my IPC mechanism. Um, that was the conclusion I came to with Sushi Roll back when I was working on the Xeon Phi. Um, shared memory bad? Actually, I allow shared immutable memory. I, I allow basically the Rust model in memory. So I have a very small region of memory that allows IPC, which is serialized messages that go over that IPC that is mutable shared memory, which is per like uh, kept in sync with atomics or not in sync, but protected by atomics. Other than that, all memory in my system is either read only shared, which means that I share caches, I share TLB entries. So there is a perf gain to doing that, to having shared memory for shared memory basically it's really just a matter of like the mezzi model let's close this so i don't die or some shit i can't believe we killed that boss i'm so proud of us honestly we should just keep playing terraria and ranting um so in the mezzi model i think intel is mezif um wonder if we can get a more detailed thing but in the mezzi model basically the only thing that's cheap is uh, shared shared and exclusive um, so I, I keep like all of my memory either in the E state or the S state. The M state kind of sucks. Uh, and then obviously tra uh, traversing or like sharing mutable memory is, is unbelievably slow. Um, yeah. Do they talk about, uh, forward here? I think Mozzie is what AMD uses, and Mezif is what Intel, yeah. Me uh, Mezif is what Intel uses. And Ford makes sense. Basically, there's like one owner of the cache line that, um, yeah. Um, or it's not an owner because that's the Mosey model, which is AMD's model. Intel's model. It's basically an extra state that reduces the traffic because traditionally in a Mezzi model, like all the cores have to broadcast all this traffic. And both the Mezif and Mozzie models basically allow, um, they allow like one thing to like own or take a responsibility for an update action such that you don't have 64 cores sending the same message. One core basically signs up to be responsible to do that. A very, very, very high level view. Yeah, John Blow says the entire ecosystem will implode uh, because of backdoors. I mean, there's going to be a lot of backdoors in crates. It's going to be an issue. Um... I don't really care like people don't care it's never gonna change it's only worse in node like it, it just people just don't fucking care is any trade bad perf uh is the any trade bad for perf and rust yes it absolutely is um but um it's not terrible you know you you basically pay the cost any anytime you do the lookup of an any so if you can keep the any stuff in like one place and then when you pull off the any types and then you work with them temper like if you work with them for long enough after being coerced into their actual types then it doesn't matter the cost of any because it's not any every time you use it unlike a lot of languages basically you pay the cost when you do the um any get uh, as ref or whatever where you actually apply the typing to it and it does the check um once you get beyond that point, it's free. It, 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 there's no extra cost. So uh, it's totally fine to use. You, it's the way that you structure your code. You work 100 hours a week? I probably work 80 to 100 hours a week. Uh, to be honest, it's fair. Out of, uh, oop, 
tries to hide all the details sooner and later, um, but sooner or later they come biting you. In my humble opinion, the, the point is that that to write good code, you need a good grasp of all the code base. Yeah, it's pretty fucking true. JavaScript forces IPC for multi-threaded. Interesting. Didn't know. I don't know shit about JavaScript, to be honest. Hard disagree on can't give other people tasks. You've had positive examples of getting code from uh, other people right on the stream. Um, also, you have some requests which you're not blocking it right now. Like, take I want derive walk fields and types. Yeah, of course. Well, yes and no. <laughs> because if I had a hard need for that derive, I'm just going to want to implement it. So... Unfortunately, I'd like to say that this is a weakness of mine in communication, but I really don't think it is. I can develop things faster. I can develop things to completion faster than I can even explain the architecture to someone of what I want implemented. I totally recognize the importance of getting people excited and giving people interesting tasking to, to learn and grow and expand. And that's why I love mentoring. I love teaching. I love doing streams like this. Um, but in a lot of situations, like I want that derive walks, fields and types, like ultimately if I need that, it's going to take way longer for me to communicate what I actually mean by that than just doing it. Obviously, like, someone like Desu probably picks up exactly what I mean by that, and it makes sense, because Desu's probably had similar problems, where it's like, I'm writing a derived macro just so I can ex expand the fields and, like, recursively call a trait that I'm implementing, which is a very common use case, and I think that should be something that is just supported in Rust. Like, personally, I don't even think that should be a proc macro or a derive. I think that there should be like a flag or a derive or some sort of a sugar where you say, I want to derive this on this object. And what that means is that you literally call that trait for everything on the structure. That's like 99% of what you need in proc macros. It's like, I implemented deserialize. Okay. When I, when I want to derive deserialize, that means I want to call deserialize on everything. Um... How much do you sleep a day? A lot. Probably like eight hours. Ten. If I if I had a drink. Downcast, that's the one. And we love your content. I'm glad. Taco, but thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. We've been just on a rant and chill, and we actually haven't been even writing code. It's been three hours into the stream, and we've been playing Terraria and ranting and not writing code. But I don't know. I am in a way better mood than, than you. Usually my rants are a little bit more angry, but now I'm actually like just, I'm frustrated with a lot of the things like all of like basically working at companies. But at the same point, I've found that I don't need to work at companies anymore, which is honestly pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> Great to hear that you're taking care of your health. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, it's weird. It's It'll probably be a couple of years before I get over the anxiety of thinking that like any minute now I'm just not going to be worth at all what I'm worth and no one's going to give me a contract ever again and I'm going to fail all my contracts. When in reality, like... Uh, like... I've got contracts now that are basically like supporting cannoli. And it, it's just like a couple hours a month of work. It's just ridiculous. It's fucking insane. It, it, it's, it's crazy. I can take on the amount of work that I want to take on. And also for the first time in my life, I can basically work multiple jobs. Because I've never really had a job that takes more than 10 hours a week to do. I hated going back to corporate after running my own company for 10 years. Fucking health insurance is so expensive as independent. Honestly, my health insurance is like free, but that's probably because I'm single and no kids. But my health insurance is like 600 bucks a month. First of all, I haven't even paid it for like a year because they didn't accept auto pay. And uh, yeah, I just don't pay it. So it's just, I probably have to renew it. 
It's a pain in the ass. Unfortunately, getting it is the hard part to me. I don't even care about the cost. They just like don't accept auto pay because I went through like Washington's healthcare finder, which means you have to pay through Washington's healthcare finder and their healthcare finder doesn't work. And it's like a shitty government website and like it just auto pay didn't work. And like it's, dude, just take my fucking money. Every time I've had a bill go to collections, it's never been because I didn't pay it. It's because they literally don't like fucking continue the auto pay. God damn it. As T operator should be con changed into, into target T. Change my view to verbose. Julian C, thank you so much for the eight months. Hell yeah. Definitely a single advantage. Yeah, I think it's like 600 a month for like literally like the best, the best insurance I could possibly find. Do you think it's possible to serialize and deserialize trade object, uh, trade objects in Rust? Can you not? I think you can, right? Why, why couldn't you? As long as it implements, uh, as long as it implements it or it's in any type that you can coerce into uh into one meant that of as operator should be changed from to casting to into oh yeah okay i read that as like uh, you should get rid of the as <laughs> sugar and just manually have to cast everything how do you not get burnt out working 80 to 100 hour weeks because i do whatever the fuck i want to do because my work is doing whatever the fuck I want to do. Because that is what is valuable. <laughs> because working on other people's ideas is less valuable than me working on whatever the fuck I want to work on. If I want to spend... 100 hours working on like a World of Warcraft bot reverse engineering while writing cheats, I can guarantee you that I'm going to I'm going to profit off of that decision. So, I just do whatever I want at this point. <laughs> I'll throw people bones when they need bones thrown, but I've never had a problem meeting everyone's expectations. That being said, I I now actually work for myself and all that matters is that there is a path to money for whatever I work on. And the path to money for me is learning. <laughs> When deserialized, uh, you need a specific, you need to specify a specific type. Otherwise, the V table is borked. Like a like a box dine, something. Really, you can't. Oh, oh, you mean deserialize? Oh yeah, deserialized round trip through it. Oh yeah, I I don't. I don't think that would really be possible. Um, I don't see how that would be, actually. Because it wouldn't know what type you're deserializing it into. If you if you know the type you're deserializing into, then you would just deserialize into that type and then uh, convert it and, like, box, box dine it. Add quote the path for, to money for me is learning. It's kind of fucking true. I know someone who makes cheats for a living. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of money in writing cheats. Um... I don't actually do it, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what it would take for me to consider selling my like Maple Story cheats. It would have to be enough money for me to care, and that's gonna have to be a lot of money because I would have to like dust them off. <laughs> um. But yeah, writing cheats for a living is totally doable. I actually worked with someone who did that. I worked with uh, um. God damn it, what's his name? Doug? Doug. Doug. Doug? Doug. I think Doug something. Fuck. Why am I blanking on his fucking name? Anyways, he was like a prolific like game cheater and he ended up working at the company I worked at and we shot the shit about cheats all the time. Um... Is there money in writing crack software? Not writing, but selling? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, the entire Chinese economy runs on crack software. <laughs> like, half of small companies, even in, like, 
the the West runs on crack software. That being said, they're just running off of what exists. So would you really get any donations or money thrown at you for that? No, not really. They they do it because it is free. <laughs> <laughs> what's the ideal ratio between actual work and learning because at some point you have to express all that learning into something concrete and real um i mean i i mean i'm just gonna say 100 percent like you can you can learn while working you you just you just write the first version while learning and then you refactor it and rewrite it and then uh and then you have a good version like, that's what I've basically always done, is write things to learn them, then throw everything away, and then write them the way you should have written them now that you know how it works. And I've, I've loved it. I, it's a fantastic model. Um... <laughs> I think the industry numbers for employment in systems and fuzzing at Gamosa's level are warped because uh, so many are not represented in such surveys. Oh, yeah, I don't even know what surveys would even cover what I do. How's your mood this month? It's pretty good. It, it goes to ups and downs. I spent six hours on my, my lawn today. That's good. It's not overgrown up to my fucking waist in, in weeds everywhere. So that's, that's a big improvement. Uh, still needs to, like, be polished and trimmed and, and like, actually, like, landscaped. But it's no longer an overgrown mess. Um, but it's pretty good. I'm working on a, a pretty big project right now that I got really lucky about. So, what about the hot tub? I was going to drain it today. That's the only thing I forgot to do is I was going to drain my hot tub. So, I, I want to, I want to have my hot tub up and running. It takes, if I'm not mistaken, it's just under like 24 hours to heat up. Um, maybe like 18 hours to heat up. So basically there's like a one day latency on, on filling it up and being able to use it. But yeah, hot tub is the, like, this would have been a great hot tub stream. <laughs> this would have been a perfect hot tub stream. But yeah, I, I worked on my yard for like six hours, forgot to eat. And then I went out and had a massive dinner and it was fantastic. Hot tub in Terraria weekends. I don't know. I don't think I can. I, hot tub's easy because it's not commitment. Terraria's hard because Terraria's a commitment, man. Um. How's the new keyboard? It's great. I mean, it's it's really heavy, actually. It's got a steel plate in it. That that seems to be like a new thing. Or maybe not a new thing, but like it's way more rigid and sturdy. Like my DOS keyboard, I can, I can uh, twist, and I can't do it to that keyboard. So it like feels really, really nice and firm in the hand. It's just probably got like a two millimeter thick steel plate, and the, it's not necessarily the bottom because it's plastic on the bottom, but somewhere on the internals. Um, super rigid. They're Cherry MX Blues, and it's a standard layout keyboard with no RGB lights. Um, the only thing that is up in the air is what will battery life be like? Because it is like a cheap chinese -y kind of keyboard. Um, that is my only concern. Is like, I need that battery to last for like, probably a year for me to not feel like shit. Um, or inconvenienced. Because like, I have a, I have a, like a shitty wireless chiclet keyboard that has lasted for like five years. And I think the, the Cherry MX Blues are legit. The keycaps are like uh, the, I forget the like double shot, whatever. They're good keycaps. So the keycaps are good. The switches are good. So what is left to be bad about a keyboard? I, and physically, it, it's the right layout and structure. Uh, PBT, I think. Um, and then um, if the only thing... That can be my concern at that point for a wireless keyboard is shitty firmware and software that drains the battery. Um, there is a switch to turn it off, and I'm going to try not turning it off because theoretically, keyboards way easier than mice. 
keyboard should really only be transmitting or doing anything when you press a key and going into deep deep sleeps like you hit keys rarely enough like a mouse actually has to be pulling at like probably probably one millisecond or five millisecond boundaries which is usually not enough to go into deep sleep whereas a keyboard you the time between keys is so long that you should be able to literally wake up send your bluetooth low energy packet go back into full deep sleep not like not like a sleep state but like most embedded chips if you've never done embedded dev most things have like a fully deep sleep where it like it drops dram it drops everything it just it's gone um um how can you be a lead hacker without RGB lights? Dude, I fucking hate it, dude. Everything with RGB lights is always shittier and lower quality. My Logitech keyboard and touchpad combo lasts months on two AAAs. Yeah, and the touchpad probably is very expensive to run. Um, The mechanical keyboard landscape has changed a lot in the past 10 years. Yeah, I mean, I'm only running DOS keyboards that I got when I was in high school. But my RGB RAM. The regular consumer market is still meh, but the enthusiast market has grown a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a lot of different keyboards. Making your own keyboard stream when? I didn't even know what I would necessarily want in a keyboard. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Uh, my Kinesis, <laughs> Kinesis Advantage 2 never gets low on battery. Yeah, this is for my couch. This is my couch computer. I don't think I want to use a wired keyboard on my couch. Kind of sucks ass. Um. <laughs> what I want from a keyboard designated button to hit Vim, uh, to exit Vim. <laughs> I don't even want that. Vim's so easy to exit. A designated button to reset the camera in OBS, yeah. I do wish I had volume up and down. That's one problem with my new speaker setup, is I can't, I can't adjust the volume of my speakers. I have to do it digitally. I don't have an analog potentiometer, which, uh, which feels like ass. I could probably just buy one. But I haven't, so I don't have one. <laughs> really easy to implement DWM though? Yeah. Yeah, but I've got my nice status bar now. This is my first DWM mod I've done. The wheel for sound feels so good. What key sequence? I'd need to have a lot of modifiers, I think. I could do maybe like print screen scroll. You know what I could use? I could use the forward and backward scroll. Cause I never fucking use those. The left and right of the fucking scroll wheel. Um, how would I even do that? Oh, that's the other problem is having, I, I always have a Pavu control open. And it uses like 10% CPU. Check, check this cringe out. What the fuck is it? Um. I like how I have this sorted by CPU, but it wasn't sorted by CPU. Okay, now it is. Yep, yeah, Pavu control is using 10% CPU. It's based on cursor movement, right? Basically everything on Linux generates a shit ton of events. So like libx11 has like 10% CPU usage. So if you are if you are an application that has a GUI on Linux with x11 and you have uh, the mouse movement on any screen even if you're minimized, uh enjoy 10% CPU usage. It's fucking great. And yes, that 10% CPU usage is is enough to trigger speed step to cause you to jump out of uh, high performance mode. So, like, if you twiddle a mouse, 
on a on a machine on a Linux machine, you probably get like a, like a third the battery life. It's fucking terrible, dude. Oh. And I even turned down my mouse polling rate to like a pleb tier, which feels bad. Should we eventually write code to get day chat? Running a Pactol uh, set sync volume? Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of typing. Why do you have it constantly running? Because it because I adjust my volume a lot. I think you're eighty percent through rants. Yeah, we're getting there. Wayland for the win. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Wayland has the same issues. What rants are you still missing? I think we've covered everything. We've gotten pretty caught up with with everything. It's been a good stream. I use Paisy Tray? Paisy's Tray? More like Pansy's Tray. Yeah, <laughs> got him. Didn't shut out Windows? Windows is fucking great. It's way better than Linux. Shitty user land? Way better kernel. Way better APIs. Way better dev environment. I got an IBM Model M and typing under Wu Tang 1 for gaming. Uh, <laughs> been two different activities with very different needs. I love the Wu Ting name. It's so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Visual Studio 2022 is so great. I mean, Visual Studio is an absolute heap of shit. I mean, it's great if your goal is to produce code quickly. I don't know. I, I hate IDEs, man. I don't think editors should have like a fucking five second load time for a, a one kilobyte file. Wooting these nuts! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> got him! <laughs> Mamma mia! Oh, we got to get the Stromboli going! Uh, Mamma mia! Oh, okay. Do we want to write the, the, uh, the code? We could work on the cannoli! We're gonna get the cannoli, yeah? Mamma mia! <laughs> Are you beyond using GDB for your workflow? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I am. Uh, you know what is uh, beyond the GDB? Beyond the GDB uh, is the uh, printf. Printf. -y. Mamma mia, you got the fucking printf. <laughs> That's offensive. <laughs> Damn right it is. Um. No, I just use printf debug. I mean, GDB is a heap of shit. GDB literally, literally never works. GDB works on like x86 Linux, Ubuntu. Anything else, it fucking breaks in like a million. I, every fucking time I use GDB, it crashes in another way. I literally will like be coding something with my friend and it'll be like, oh, let's debug it in GDB. And we're like, oh, that's going to be a waste of time. And then we open it up and it is like, it fucking crashes parsing the symbols. It's like, yep, we fucking knew it. Why did we even bother trying? G core never works somehow. Loading symbols never fucking works. Crashes all the fucking time. It hangs. You never get control back. Ptrace itself is a fucked API. So even if it does have a perfect debugger, Linux itself is going to make it be shit experience anyways. It's just, it's just ass, dude. GDB is a piece of shit. Um, LLDB? Have started playing around with it. Also shit.
All right, Godling and Julian, you got to pick. Which plushie do you want to be? I'm coming here to see my mother dog out of context. 87% of rants completed. Cannoli, of course. Okay. Okay. Godlin gets to be the cannoli. <laughs> Damn, that's a tough choice. <laughs> Julian, too late. You get to be the avocado. <laughs> I've got two new plushies coming this week. Avocado be fresh though. I know, right? Look how much it protrudes. Look at that. Look at that girth. <laughs> it got a little stem on the top. Oh, it's perfect. The avocado is just chef's kiss. The cannoli is just like, why, why, why can I get a stuffed animal cannoli? <laughs> this is why you need a decent salary, yeah. All right, chat, now we get to do some show and tell. God, that works great. I built this today, chat. Ow. Look at this. Look at this bad boy. This is my best design ever. So, it is a it's a USB powered fan. All right. All right. It's it's a it's a it's a USB powered fan. And I put feet on it. Didn't realize it was so huge. Yeah, it's 200 millimeters. That's that, that's 20 centimeters for uh, 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 it's also something in nanometers too. But yeah, it is a <laughs> it's a massive fan. It really is. Um, which means that it's silent. It is silent. So what I did is I drilled out 0.2 meters. So I. The whole size on these, I think it's five sixteenths, seven thirty seconds. I forget what the whole size is, but you'll see that. So I bought these feet off McMaster and I wanted to have everything rubber um, for noise dampening. So, um, so I got these little feet of McMaster car. And I went with pointy because pointy is always better for feet. The pointier that feet are, the less rocking you get. That's the problem I have with my DM52. And this is, this is this kind of shit that people make the mistake of. They put really wide feet on it. And that's wrong. Really wide feet is wrong. Because that means there's more contact surface there which means that if there's a bend in the case, and there, there always will be, it's thin sheet metal, um, you have more contact surface, which means that it then can rock. What you want to do is you want to have, and uh, it's like the TI-84, I think, has the best feet. It has these tiny, they look like grains of rice that are vertical. They're like vertical, like grains of rice rubber feet. That's what you want. The pointier... The less the variance matters of the surface. Pointy feet. Pointy fucking feet. Unless, unless it's a machine material where you can actually ensure that it's flat. But for sheet metal, for anything that's molded, pointy. Pointy. So, um, I bought these. These are threaded M6 1.0. So my little shop here is all metric. I can do a lot of things in Imperial, but I'm mainly metric here. Um... So I got these feet, which are M6 1.0, uh, standard standard thread for uh, M6, and um, they're really, really nice. They're, like, load-rated. Um, there's, like, an actual spec. They've got, like, a metal backing. These are really nice, rigid, rubberized feet. These are probably, like, five bucks a piece, really expensive, uh, but they do a great job. 
So then you can see here um, that I drilled out these holes a little bit larger. So this side, the side that goes up, has been left alone. Nothing has touched that. You can see that there is a rigid channel um, in there. And that's why I went with the back one, because it has a little bit more structural support. It's not floating out there. And then all I did is I, I drilled that out to 5 millimeter, and then I tapped it for 6 1.0, which is the correct for a 75% thread. Um, so we did a 75% thread. It's not going to focus on that. No way in hell. Not with that f-stop. Anyways, so those were drilled out. Did that all in my drill press. Made sure everything was centered. Tapped them straight. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five. It looks like six threads in here, which is a pretty good amount of thread. Um, this is like a glass fiber, pretty good uh, thing. These screw in here, so nice. Check this out. So we'll thread it. We'll thread it until we're coming through. There you go, we're coming through. No, no wiggle. No, no wiggle. And that's barely in there. Oh, the threads. It, it's the best I've ever felt threads on a plastic. Did a, did a fucking great job on that. Tapped everything straight. Used a, a tap guide and everything to make sure that I tapped those perfectly. And then you just finger snug those. So now you can see how much is screwed in there. Um, so that's like adjustable height, leveling, whatever you want to do. So then that sits on a desk. That sits on a desk. It's all vibration dampened, all that sort of good stuff. And then if I plug it in, just barely reaches this nearest USB thing. Now I have a fan running like that. It makes no sound. It is, it rotates so slowly. Like, um, 800 RPM. You can hear the wind? Barely. But you cannot hear any mechanical things. You can't hear motor. You can't hear coil squeal. Um, nothing. Obviously, that's why I'm using a knock to a fan. It's just a really nice fan. 800 RPM, which is very, 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 very low. Obviously, it's a massive fan, so it's actually moving a lot. I don't know what the CFM is. Um, pulls, uh, pulls, pulls under a watt. Um, so then I have that. Sits on a desk. Sits flat. Raised up on those feet, which, first of all, rubberizes, levels it, does all that sort of thing. But then also gives room for the air to suck in from under. It actually blows up is the way that I've designed it. And then I can take a phone... And I can set a phone on top of it. And now my phone doesn't get hot. And it doesn't get CPU throttled. And there you go. That's how you did that. <laughs> Didn't come with the USB cable? It did, actually. Um, let me see if I have a USB... I have a USB A to C adapter. Oh, but then I need a female female C. I, I want to uh I want to read the voltage of it. I have one of these things, right? That can tell you the wattage of a USB device, but only USB C and this is USB A powered. And I don't really want to hook up my like actual meter and everything. But yeah, it's it's rated for rated for 0.85 watts. And it is uh, um, 0.85 watts. And this fan is a 5-volt fan. It's not a conversion. There's no circuitry. This USB cable is directly a pass-through of the USB wires and voltage into the fan header. It's not like it's doing a conversion or anything. Literally, it's just two pins, power and ground. Um, no conversion. So I would imagine... And it's still spinning. Look at that. I unplugged it like fucking 30 seconds ago. Um, obviously, great knock to a fan. Bearings, just fantastic. So that allows me to keep my phone cool. That phone's already getting hot um, without the fan. 
So that allows me to get rid of uh, throttling issues. But yeah, fan, everything came together. I just had to order the four feet and then I drilled and tapped them. Really, really no work there. And uh, my USB cable fell on the floor. God fucking damn it. That was my fabrication of the day. Was super fun. Noctua is Austrian, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But yeah, then I just uh, set my phone on there and it doesn't get hot. And then we're good. Because that phone is pulling five watts. Five watts 24 seven on a phone is uh, it's a lot. All right. Will my camera focus now that I have red in the background? And I don't think so. Yes. Really didn't like that red. Weird. You think an old Australia? Central red backlight. Yeah, I know it was good. I liked it. But unfortunately it was it was fighting fighting with me. Knock to a fans, the last good German product. <laughs> you have no AC in the room? No, I have no AC in the room. And it doesn't even matter. A AC would not keep that cool. <laughs> it just wouldn't. Five watts on a phone is a lot. It just, it just is. Five watts, 24-7. Even just raising it up off the ground is probably pretty big, but yeah, I can't hear. I didn't even know that was running, which is crazy. Like, even when I don't have my speakers playing, I can't hear it. And I can hear the fan in my, like, USB forensics device. Like, that fan drives me nuts. And this, can't hear it at all. What phone are you fuzzing? Um, I'm not, I'm not fuzzing. I'm just running tests. I don't really fuzz on phone. I can fuzz either in Kimu or in Vekimu. So there's really no reason for me to ever fuzz on a physical phone. Um, I'm just running tests. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba. You can make a holder in front of the fan and attach it to a wall. That way it would cool both you and the phone. To be honest, this would be a really good fan. That's, a, that's one of the big problems. Like, I want a nice fan that's optimized for quietness. Because, like, standard box fans are optimized for cheapness. And they're so loud because they beat the air. They have, like, no, like, engineering of, like, the fan blade design stuff. Have you ever done full injections? I I'm going to say no. I would say... People would maybe say I have theoretically, yes. I would say no. Like, not, not enough to say that I've done it. All right. Uh, are we going to write code today? God damn it. I thought we could put it off. All right, chat. We have to do benchmarking of cannoli um, because until we do that, un until this is done, chat, for what it's worth, even smaller Noctua fans, like 80 millimeter are silent if they're decoupled and don't have silly air restrictions. Yes. Yeah, they really are. The 200 millimeters is just nice because it, it perfectly fits two phones, which is really all I ever need. Like two phones is usually what I do. I'll have one phone where I'm like running tests and then another phone that's the exact same phone that I'll be able to ADB into and like manually do things or like dev my tests and like improve them. The other one's just running them, uh, and I don't want to interfere with that. So, yeah, it fits two, two phones. My view is the bigger the fan, the quieter the fan. 
Because the, the because you get that squaring. Squaring? Pi R squared? Yeah. Um, so the bigger the fan, the lower the RPM, the exponentially lower RPM for the exact same flow rate. So it's just strictly better. It's quieter, less uh, mushroom plushy. Oh, I want a mushroom plushy. That would be good. Uh, the new plushies that are coming are... I'm getting loaf of bread. So loaf of bread is coming and... Loaf of bread is the name of my new operating system. Um, what's the... That's the no core OS. What the fuck is the other plushie that I got? <laughs> got loaf of bread. I swear there's a reason I got the other plushie. Fuck did I get? I got a t-shirt as well. I deleted the email. I don't even know what it is. Fuck. <laughs> what did I buy? Got a bread and what? What plushie did I need? Did I preemptively get one? The fuck did I get? Chat, what did I get? What did I order? <laughs> uh, what did I get? What did I get? Oh, I got a grilled cheese. I got a grilled cheese because I, I, I should have before. But I got a gourmet grilled cheese. Check check out the check out this grilled cheese. <laughs> the goo has, I think, a uh, texture or depth. <laughs> Look at that fucking thing! <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. So I got that for grilled cheese, which is an old operating system that I wrote, but it deserves it. Squishable. <laughs> it deserves it. But yeah, it's perfect, dude. Ugh. It's so good, I know. And the loaf of bread? We'll check out the loaf of bread. Ah, look at that! <laughs> it's just perfect! It's perfect! <laughs> it's just- it's just a fucking loaf of bread! <laughs> so yeah, I got a loaf of bread coming and grilled cheese coming. They'll probably be here on Monday. And cuddle with that? Yeah, I think this one will be like the better cuddleable shape because it's more cylindrical. <laughs> Ships with the communist manifesto. <laughs> Can we get some hammers and sickles in chat? Oh, God. All right. So, chat, there is something that I don't even want to write. Oh, coffee pot is awesome. Yeah, coffee pot's also really good. Um, yeah, so uh, let's make sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay logged out. Okay, um, yeah, so they have a coffee pot that's really cute. Yeah, look at the, look at the fucking coffee pot. <laughs> <laughs> It is so fucking good, dude. Should I make a bootleg squishable? Uh, I'm really picky on plushies. I also like lemonade. Look at that! Look at that! Look at the fucking lemonade! It's got, it's got a... Oh my god! 
god! He's got a sip! He's got a smile on the lime lemon! <laughs> oh my god, that's so good! What the fuck? Oh! God, I didn't see that a smile on the fucking lime! Lemon, why do I keep saying lime? Holy shit, that's so cute! Strawberries really cute. Cupcakes really cute. I do have an old project called Cupcake. I could justify getting a cupcake. The apple with the worm. Oh, that's a mini. Obviously the cannoli we have. What do we what do we have here? So there's toast. I actually have a mini toast. This sushi roll is new with the wee buys. Um, I do have a toast. I have a mini toast somewhere. Um, I named a, an Android exploit toast. <laughs> and I got a mini one because <laughs> it was a shitty bug. <laughs> the, the size of the plushie determines the quality of the bug. So, like, I've got a bunch of tiny squishables for shit bugs. And then I've got some massive, massive squishables for good bugs. <laughs> The egg? I know the egg's perfect. It's just, this is just the fucking egg. <laughs> so, lemonade. Lemonade's probably the next one I'll get because it's just cute as fuck. I actually, uh, I have something in progress right now where I can probably justify getting that. Honestly, peanut butter's really cute too. There's fucking peanut butter going down the cap of the thing. <laughs> Like how, uh, what, like, how do you even come up with this shit? <laughs> grapes, I think the grapes are great. <laughs> Booty bigger than a Prius. <laughs> Ice cream sandwich, that's really cute. I have the waffle cone. The dumplings are really cute. Look at those little eyelashes. I like the pumpkin spice latte. That's really cute. Matcha tea. The takeout box. The burrito's pretty cute. Oh, the cherries. Oh my God, look at those. Oh, the little wink. <laughs> Hot dogs, good. they're all just so good. There, there really aren't many bad ones. The banana. <laughs> Their artists are top notch. I know. I know. Sometimes you can go and peek at the... Um, oh, these are only the comfort foods. Obviously, they have a bunch of things that aren't foods. I don't really care. Anything that isn't a food isn't cute to me. I mean, the rose is cute. The Venus flytrap is cute. Cauldron's cute. Okay, uh, just all their stuff's good, okay? Just all their shit's good. Um, you know, if we ever, uh, if we ever, uh, if we ever got enough people, uh, 12, uh, 1,200 pieces, 15 inch, 1,200 pieces, 1,200 times 40, like 50 grand, I'm not saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Need the cauldron at some point, yeah. Gosh. Dude, I, I, imagine, imagine I have like a fucking recruiting booth at a conference and I give out like actual nice plushies instead of fucking pens, like $50 plushies. <laughs> <laughs> Make one for your company plushie? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Company plushie or like, uh, uh, I don't know. Can we make one for the stream? We can make a rust one. I feel like, I feel like the rust community would actually love a high quality plushie. Obviously, there's plenty of plushies out there for rust. 
but most plushies are just shit quality. I'm sorry, most plushies are just shit quality. I would want to send their artists Ferris and get one. And then I would allow them to, oh my God, the Highland cow. <laughs> A lot of times they're pictured with the artist. I don't know if this one is in this case. No. Sometimes they're user submitted things. Sometimes, maybe this is the artist. Sam C, art lead. No, this is the art lead. Featured designs, oh my God. But yeah, they have retiring squishables and then you can follow, vote on new designs. These are only gonna be the arts. Oh, fucking like tofu, a mossy rock frog. Kenny campfire with a little spark. Mossy log. <laughs> I want the Ramune. <laughs> but yeah, I like that they credit the artist. Yeah, of course. Of course they do. Squishable actually looks like a pretty good company to work for. And I, I think, I think... I think their factories are also fine. I'm not 100% sure. Sometimes it's hard to know. But like, I don't know, dude. They just like, they, uh, let's see. Um, do they have like an about us? They do have uh, about us. Yeah. Chief Squisher, like, like, it just looks like a fun fucking place. Chief Operating, they have, like, fucking photos with their Squishables. Like, come on. Tell me this isn't the dankest little corporate site. A lot of the designers, they're just all with their, like, favorite little Squishables. It just, is that a ravioli? <laughs> It just, it just looks like a good, a good little place. They do Project Open Squish. Um, this is where you can, like, vote on things. Honestly, I think we should just put the fucking rust, rustation in here. Have someone take the rustation and make it into a more squishable, uh, model. And then see if we can just get them to, like, I don't even want to get a, a custom run of rustations. I just want them to just have the rustation in their thing where other people can buy it. I think there's a big enough market. Like, rust people love fucking plushies, dude. Like, I, I think they would have no problem selling out. Manufactured in China, Vietnam, and Thailand. Yep. Do they talk about, like, their, their labor? How do you keep your factories safe? There we go. Yep. ICTI certified. We ourselves visit all of them on a regular basis. Uh, use a third party that does unannounced checks. That's good. That's actually really important. Yep. Confirming fair overtime. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I know plushies. That's one of the reasons why I don't mind paying $50 for plushies because it's at least a little better. It's probably still not great. But it's still better. There was a gopher plushie. Yeah, and I think Google did that privately. I don't think that was an open thing. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I could maybe like tweet it out of like, hey, let's get the rustation in here. You could have some good volume to it. I think it'd be cute as fuck. I think you could do it. You'd maybe have to maybe change the eyes a bit. But I think they could get most of the shaping. I think they could get all the shaping of, uh, of Ferris correct. Like, yeah, that was Google, and then they stopped. Yeah, exactly. They use SSL TLS. I I didn't see it. But <laughs> like the chicken leg. Uh, they need a European warehouse. Having stuff shipped over from the U.S. and the import taxes make everything more expensive. Y yeah, don't live in a shithole, okay? I want a scared, uh, Ferris plushie, yeah. Even for those who don't know Ferris, having a cute crab is neat, yeah. 
I think you would want to change a couple things about about Ferris. Oh, uh, but yeah, I also got a t-shirt from them. Where the fuck was it? They had some other thing. Squish swag, was it? Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at, look at these. Look at, look, look at, this, look at this fucking avocado purse, dude. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the little alien hat. I got this shirt. I mean, come on. Come on. It's just a sick shirt. I want this specific one. That's, uh, is that Koro? That's like red Koro? What else do they have? Are these insulated? No, I don't think so. I only use insulated drinking stuff now. It's just better. Sorry. If they had like Yetis, I'd totally fucking buy a Yeti by them. Um. In process design. Oh, in process designs. So are these. I'm guessing in process. I don't know if this means they're still working on the design or they're. They've picked it. I mean, Strawberry Jam will be cute as fuck. Yeah, I think all of these are ones that will come out. Oh, Cotton Candy. Oh, the little saucer of cheese curls. Oh. Uh, <laughs> cup Ramen. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so good. Yeah. Cuddly crab. Yeah. I don't know. Do they do they sell anything else? What else can I buy? Peanuts? Oh, literally peanuts. <laughs> I was like, what? Peanut? Boozy buds? I've never seen these. These aren't advertising on their main thing. They're probably like two. They can't have these on their main thing. Oh, shit. These are all new things. The Bloody Mary. <laughs> yes. The wine glass. The margar. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Oh, shit. Oh, I didn't even know they had those. Sparkles blind box. Okay, they're, they're like, uh, surprise, mis mystery boxes. The Yay team. Ah, fucking sports. Ah, get the fuck out of here. Ah, fuck. Fuck off. Jigsaw puzzles. Fuck yeah. Yeah, they got some good shit. Whiskey Dorito. Um. Was that potion your brand? Oh, I didn't see a potion. Maybe I missed it. Uh, maybe you should just browse the internet and play video games and rant because it's obvious you don't want to code. Yeah, fuck, fuck coding, dude. Um. <laughs> the Tanuki is 11 out of 10. Yeah. God. I, uh. They're all just perfect. All right, I'm going to get a cookie, and then we'll write code.
All right. Potion. Oh, shit. Waiting on prototype. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. Rachel has this part squishable art team. When she's not making squishable, she's probably playing Animal Crossing. Uh, what about a Hollow Knight stream? Oh, Hollow Knight's so hard, dude. This, oh, yeah, the mushroom's cute as fuck. Mmm. 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 You hype for Wrath? No. Yeah. yeah. Trying. Okay. So, chat, we're gonna do some graphics dev soon. But we can't do that until this code is done, okay? So, we're gonna write, like, a super high-performance hex editor with a twist. Um, and to do that, uh, we need to make sure that uh, cannoli is fast first. <laughs> okay. So let's do some benchmarking at cannoli. I think it's really slow right now. And just been a lot of code creep. Needs to be, needs to be perfed. Um, workspace. So I think right now it doesn't build. Yeah. Ooh. So, um. <laughs> Zom, don't get the giant mushroom. You don't need it. Okay. So, right now... I keep switching between this being a vector and not, and I think I don't want it to be a vector. Um, the problem is, I think I want to change these APIs so they don't return a trace. Instead, you get access to the trace buffer in these. Can I do that? Yes, I can do that. Um, so I think these will take mutable references to the trace buffer. Because I ran into a situation where I need to push multiple trace events in one. Um, so I think I'll add support for that. And then, consuming the trace, I think I want to give you a slice of the trace. Because right now I'm reallocating those traces. So let's see what our performance is right now. Um... I think this is how it was. This should now build. Ooh. I love that sample so much. Okay. Um. We need a decent benchmark. Um. Uh, cannoli. Um, then we'll go into examples, benchmark graph. Um, okay. Cargo run release. Mmm, the cookies are so good. Kimu build. Kimu. Well, let's look at uh Shit, we only have ARC.
Fuck. Um... With cannoli is equal to home cannoli. Those are the target target list target target list. Um, ARX sixty four Linux user, Mipsil Linux user, RISV sixty four Linux user. All right. Come on. Is there a uh, good and light substitute for Docker? No. Docker just sucks. <laughs> Docker, Docker just asked, dude. All right, so that's building, linking. System D N spawn? Gross. Gross. Did you legitimately just say system D N spawn? Fucking gross. Anything system D is just gross. FreeBSD jails. I used to be a big fan of jails, and jails are great. But ah, they were cool. But now they're not cool because people are abusing them for shit. Shit code, shit design. Um generating docs. Okay, now uh, we can go into the uh, cannoli. I can't remember how this works. Benchmark graph. Oh, this will produce. Ah, I see. I see. Um. Okay. Solaris zones. <laughs> Solaris. <laughs> uh, XD. Uh, Kimu build, and we'll do the uh, risk. Uh, Kimu risk v cannoli and we'll use uh cannoli which cannoli do we want to use target i guess we'll just use um uh i think hmm I kind of want to benchmark register trace. Ah, oh, God, it's gonna register tracing is gonna be slow, chat. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be really slow, and I feel bad, and you should feel bad about me feeling bad. Um. Oh, that's probably built by now. That's fine. Build build the viz. Um, we're gonna do. We'll start off with uh. Lib reg tray. Uh, no. Uh, we're gonna do lib jitter always is what we'll use for this, and then uh, we just give it the binary. I think. Okay. Uh, we're gonna copy I really need to stop making these in examples. I'm just gonna copy this to um Okay Um Let's start building an Eric 64 muscle. OK. 
Okay, that's building. We'll wanna we'll have an Eric 64 muscle compiler soon. Um We're just gonna plot log.txt u two three. Okay, um <laughs> Clap it up, chat. Nailed it. Okay. And we can run multiple benchmarks in the same instance. Um, and then what am I actually logging? So I am on execs. I'm adding something to the trace. Then I'm adding the length of the trace into that buffer. If it's been over a million instructions, then get the cycles elapsed, get the time elapsed, print number of instructions executed, elapsed, and cycles. That timer starts when that uh, when that TID, when the thread connects in. So that's basically right away. So we start a timer, handle the trace. We're doing nothing to actually process the trace. Here we're only accumulating the length. So we're actually pushing things to the buffer here. Well, uh, I don't know if that pushes things to a buffer. What is what is a vec of zero size types? Is it zero size? Like, am I just using vec as a counter? I would think so. Um, get the time elapse, print all of that. So uh, two to one is what we want. And then if elapse is greater than five, then exit. And I think that allowed me to infinite loop. And this is with uh, four threads processing the trace. And obviously our perf is gonna be really, really bad right now because we are streaming, do have a game open. Um, do, oh, we're building other shit. I should close Discord, close my browser. I should start paring things down a bit. Um, obviously when we're building this tool chain, it doesn't matter. But this is just going to be really noisy. Um, plot dot plot. So this is two to one and million target instructions per second. So we're just going to say... Uh, number of instructions divided by number of seconds and uh, divide that by 1e6. Okay. Uh, probably should run it. Run. Complete. Exit. Yeah, we're getting uh, getting about 400 million instructions a second. That's okay. Let's uh change those ticks and we'll do uh 1440 by 900, which is kind of my favorite for graphs. That's just growing because we're printing average over time. Yeah, we're getting like 411, 412 million instructions a second. That's not great. Okay. Uh, Log.txt is going to be log for thread. Um, and this is everything. Let's see, uh, we're running um, jitter always. I'm just gonna look at it here, you can't see it. Uh, that is all instructions and all memory operations. Okay, so this is um, uh, p, uh, inst and mem.txt. Okay, so what we can do is we can change jitter always temporarily. Uh, we'll just change that here and then compile everything here. Now we can see what kind of benchmark we get. Uh, log for thread inst.txt. So this is instructions only. This is not going to be tracing memory accesses. 
And we should have memory axes here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, make file. We are building it without optimizations. So there should be a memory axis in the hot loop. Uh, let's just take a look. But yeah, the hot loop here should have a memory access because there's a... Oh shit, it's a bunch of knobs. Okay, so this should be roughly the same perf then. Ah. Fourth or PC and mem. I think PC and mem is what we called it. Uh, PC uh, dot text. Fourth or inst. Inst. Did you say inst and mem? Yes. Okay. Okay, so just instructions is outperforming. Um, wow. So even having, having memory operations that rarely matters that much. That's crazy. That's wild. Okay. Um, and then let's just try. We are building. So my, my system is pegged right now. Oh, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's doing dot slash configure. Uh, let's try an eight thread inst just to see if that's getting us anything. So I'll just switch this to an eight. See if this gains us anything. It probably won't. But we're really bottlenecking on the fact that, um, wow. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. That's good. All right. Now let's, I don't think I'm going to improve beyond that. If I go to like 12, I just don't, um, there might be dim rats at this point. Um, uh, 12 threads theoretically was higher, but I, I think we're, we're starting to split hairs on basically, uh, system load i'm not gonna get full perf when i'm streaming unfortunately it, it just saps the cpu too hard um i think full perf is like 1.2 mil what is it what do i advertise um Yeah, like the, the like the 2.2 billion territory. Yeah, I think we're just not going to get that one streaming, unfortunately. Yeah, even with one consumer before we were getting better than that. Uh, okay, maybe there's been perf regressions. That's what we're going to hammer out right now. We're going to look at eight threads. Um Eight threads is probably a good mix. Um I know that we're probably benefiting from eight threads, eight third inst, and then we'll call this improved. Um, so we'll just start making code changes randomly and then hope that we get improvements. So this will be eight third inst imp. Okay. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh, 
god. Uh, um. What can I do? What can I do? I'm trying to think if I have any servers I can use right now. I have my CPU research server. There's no OS on it. Um. Hmm. God damn it. Hmm. I wish I had a computer online, man. Um. I have old hardware, but I'd, I'd, I'm not going to run this on old hardware. I think my CPU research server is an 8-core, maybe a quad-core Xeon. Clocked at probably like 3.5. Hmm. <sighs> Oh. Got to work in the oil fields, Manana. Good luck. Be safe. What the fuck do I have for computers, man? AMD boxes, old workstations with fucking like first gen Xeons, no. Uh, my CPU machine, but I think it's only a quad core, man. Laptop? Laptop might be the play. Laptop might be the play. I'll just reboot it, and uh, that way I won't have a, a window session up. But let, we'll see how quiet the laptop is, but I think the laptop will be pretty quiet. What happened to Polar? It's offline. Okay. But yeah, this is... We can't... We can't... We can't benchmark on this system. Just can't.
Okay, <sighs> laptop's up. And it's quiet. Yeah, we can uh, we can use my laptop. That was a great uh, a great thing. I always kind of forget that my laptop exists. Um, all right, so we have to move all of our dev to our laptop now. Um, okay, and then we'll just uh, we'll scoop that over. I might bring my laptop downstairs because. I'm definitely having like latency issues with Wi Fi. Gross. Um, okay, and then let's see if I can change, um, uh, and, um, Yeah, this key latency is insanely bad. Dude, Wi-Fi is fucking ass, dude. Um... Okay, and then... See if I can... Oh!
Okay. Oh my god, did I get a different IP? Fuck. God damn it. Rip! All right. And then we'll uh uh go into cannoli cargo clean scoop cannoli to porty. Ah, uh, we have to do this. Okay, and then we'll scoop, um, okay, going to cannoli. All right, so we should be able to dev here now. Build. And H top is quiet. We're all good. Can you just CPU set? No. No. They, they, there's no way to get consistent results with other noisy shit on the system. It's just not going to happen. Okay. All right, so, um, that's built jitter always, and then we probably want another dev environment, and this is for the benchmark itself. Let's, uh... Y on this one. Uh, benchmark this. Mm. I probably have a Kimu build here. Looks like I have all of them. Nice. Uh, Kimu, Risk V64, Cannoli, uh, mm, Cannoli, Target, Release, Lib, Jitter, Always, uh, Benchmark, RV64. Okay. Nice. All right, that's working. Um, and then this is just going to be uh, log 8 thir inst improved and uh, we'll just put it in here and we'll see if we're getting consistent results with eight threads we might not get consistent results actually you might want to drop to like four because this is an eight core yeah perf is dropping but i think we're over commit there Let's drop this down to four.
Okay, so this is now four thread imp. Let's see what happens here. And we could start doing pinning and stuff as well. But system is quiet. I'm gonna close even H top. Beautiful. There we go. Um, definitely have some sort of perf losses here. Okay, let's make sure the results are stable though. Um, we're just gonna overwrite uh, this. That's still not great. Let's see if we can get that more consistent. Um, task set C0. Uh, and you can give it a list, right? Yes. Um, so we'll pin that to core 0. And then this we're going to run on... C one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So now we know that they're going to be split. Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll run that and then we'll do another imp here. Hmm, not great, but th this is fine. I think we can play in these realms. Realms. Um, and then let's make the benchmark from last, I guess. Elapse cycles. Uh, let delta cycles is equal to RDTSC minus... Um, self last report. Oh, that's number of instructions. That's fine. We'll do, uh, we'll just do the same thing and we'll just have this be RDTSC. It shouldn't matter. Actually, that is going to be faster. Um, oh, shit. Oh, well, let's just add a variable. Um, uh, last cycles is that, and then this is going to be last cycles. RDTSC. Now we can do like a 12.6 and we'll do um, self instructions. Uh, minus self last reports. As F64 divided by um, RDTSC minus last cycles self. Uh, so this is instructions per cycle. And then, uh, actually we can just do this. Let, we don't need fucking time. Time stupid. Uh, get rid of that, that, that. Uh, and then elapsed is equal to RDTSC minus, let's do this. We'll just print one fucking number, two numbers. Um, elapsed is RDTSC minus uh, self dot instructions. No, what am I doing? Uh, self dot... Start cycles. Let uh, delta is RDTSC minus self dot last cycles. That should be better. And then this is going to print elapsed. 
and then we'll print this divided by elapsed and then we'll do let elapsed is equal to elapsed as f64 divided by mm, uh 2.4 e9 okay Two point four E nine. Okay, um, that's fine. Already TSCing like this is a little verbose, but that's okay. I don't think we print often enough that it matters, but we'll see. Uh, I shouldn't need this exit. Um, Elapsed, and then this divided by delta. And this is uh, dot four, so uh, six seconds. Uh, we'll do 12 on both of these, not that it matters. Uh, instructions minus the last report, so this is the delta, so this is the instructions executed in the last window of reporting. I guess I'm recomputing this. X D. Just remove that, go to this, run this. Done, flushed, K. Okay. Plot. Now we're gonna plot uh uh one to two. Uh one to two over one e six. Beautiful. That's better. Okay. Uh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Then we can increase the averaging window and stuff. Uh, all that stuff is really easy. So, um, let's just do non-imp. Just see if it's consistent. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's just add a little bit more averaging in here. Good. Good. This is okay. I mean, we're we're pretty close. That initial drop's interesting. Probably as we're picking our core. Um. God damn. Why is my perf so bad right now? Oh, is it because it's 64 bit? This is also on a laptop, so perf is going to be a little bit worse because of uh, just caches, memory bandwidth. I mean, we shouldn't be hitting memory. We should be all in cache. Uh, 256 times 4. Mm, we're hitting L3. Okay. Um, I do think this is entirely because we're running 64 bit. Let's try a, a benchmark. I think it's ARM. Valid ELF. Is it? Uh, oh, it's MIPSL. Okay, we're not bottlenecking on that, which is weird. How? Try one. We're going to go back to risk five as well. Much slower. 
That's good. Way slower. About 230 millo per second. Just bad, but that's fine. Um. Wow. It's not my trace processing is just slow now, is it? So they're clearly bottlenecking on processing. What's our uh, pipe configuration? 16 buffers, 256k chunks. Uh, laptop have L3? Yeah, of course it has L3. <laughs> <laughs> um so really all of the purpose spent uh let's see scope state num thread so you spin up all the threads wait for a connection well we already have a connection get a ticket Is it this? Oh, is it because we're using a fucking timer? Eh, that shouldn't matter. Oh, I could. I could though. <gasps> While we have something to read. While the socket is open. Okay, so this is now getting into the hot loop. Last data is greater than that, then sleep. Okay, I, no, it's not the timer. It's fine. Uh, hot pull. Try receive, that goes into parse payload. Then we sequence it. Process the results if we press the payload. Refresh hot polling. That's only if we had a payload. Uh, at that point, cost probably isn't too high. Find the right trace index. Binary search is a little slow, but I think it's fine. Insert the trace, report them in order. This isn't the get tid stuff, is it? Can't be. Trace vec new. And those vecs shouldn't be allocating. Okay, let's start. Uh... Hmm. All right, so let's put a time on this. Let's go back to four. One point two two eight, two four three, two four six. All right, we got a stable time. We're gonna say two four six, um, because we're about to lose our actual benchmark. What I'm gonna do is process trace, uh, or what is it? Uh, parse payload. Uh, return. Okay. And let's see if that gets us a perf speed up. Should it only be on the consumer side of things? Let's see what we get. Okay. We are absolutely bottlenecking on parsing the trace. That gave us uh, how big of a speed up? Uh, 1.246 roughly to a 0.711. 1.75 on like 900 mil is like 1.6 bill. Okay. So, um... You know, we did add a lot more switch conditions. Hmm. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Let's print the ops. We should only really have like a couple of M maps at the start and then the same op throughout the whole stream. Obviously this is gonna be slow. 
I don't think it's even going to run to completion. It's just so much data going on right now. Okay. All 128s. Okay. Um, sweet. Um... Let's just uniquely sort that. Let's just see how many things we have. We have a 176, a 177. And those are M maps, I think. What's a 176 is a... What? Oh, that's B.O. Yep, M map and M unmap. Okay. So those probably fire a few times. Um, let's just grab for uh, 176. We have four of those and one of those. Okay, so that is clearly not our traffic. Um, okay, so this code's just slow. Wow. Get that. That, get that, read on the lines. Okay, so... Is it the switch? Like, if I get rid of a lot of these other, uh, other options, do I gain perf? And we can comment out everything else. Okay, running, good. Use a sampling profiler? Nah, sampling profilers are useless for stuff like this. Profilers just suck. I've never gotten good info out of profile. 1.156. So just based on the number of options that we have, that's hurting us. Fuck. This code gen must be ass. Um, what if I do get unchecked? How much perf are we losing? Well, let's undo everything first. Um, then let's try 1.246 number to beat. Unsafe this. Payload as pointer. So that does the length check. We'll just not do the length check. See if that gets us anything. This should be pretty cheap. Fuck me. Fuck me. I mean, I guess this code is just not even being used. Oh, God. What? Oh, I need to update that payload. Okay, that is important. I can't comment that out. Um. Wow, okay, how do I optimize that then?
Hmm. Temp is zero. Save off the current. Advance it. Turn the offset to read from. What's the point of that? Oh, because we can read multiple types. Hmm. Just hit an exec. How do you remember what does what? In, in I guess, in what context? Hmm. Payload. Temp, op size, size of all the types. So, fuck. I'm getting slaughtered by bounds checks. Ugh, how do I eliminate bounds checks? Ugh. I'm just going to double check. Make sure that it's still slow. No, it's not still slow. Is it the OK or what? It's not the OK or is it? You fucking kidding me? Wow, what? That must massively change the graph shape. That early exit from the function is just really bad code gen. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? 1.267, you, you see it right here. 1.275, 1.306. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to an unwrap. Now it's an unwrap, run this. Now we've almost doubled our perf. Fuck me. Sorry for the stupid question. I'm trying to learn. No, no problem. It's just hard. I didn't know like what you were necessarily referring to. But yeah, for a lot of this, I, I mean, I've written all of this code myself. So I, a, a lot of times when you write code yourself, you kind of just know what you wrote based on what you would do now. Like if I look at this code and I'm like, okay, what would I be doing to parse these bytes? This is exactly the code I would write. So I, I kind of know by nature of what I would expect. Now, when working with foreign code, it gets a lot more difficult and comments become more important. Unwrap does use cold function on the hood. I don't think it's that. I think it's just changing the graph shape a lot. Um,
That has to return up through here. Is that the only error path, I guess? Consume dot zero. Consume. Those are returning up. Maybe defining a dummy function. I, I can't imagine that would work. I think. I think it literally just optimizes better without that without that ret there. It just is just not very smart about it. Um, let's see what happens if we okay or else. Oh my god. This is semantically identical. But all I did is I changed it to a... Uh, oh my god. That is disgusting! Holy fuck! Nice code gen? Yeah, right? Like, that's really bad. Um... Look at the assembly. I can feel the code. I, I, I know exactly what it's doing. So best case scenario is a 714-723-721-728-741-735. And now we are getting that while processing the trace. 768-778-790-787. So we're maybe paying a small cost. Let's see if we can drop threads down now. Nice, Kojin. Yeah, that was pretty bad. There's a 1-4. That's okay. We are, we're we're bottlenecking on processing the chase in that case. What about this one? 2 core, 759, 760, 762. And then we might start getting dim rats. 792, 798, 806. It looked almost like 2 was better. Two is better than one. Seven six three seven six four eight oh five eight oh five. Okay. Um, we're gonna do I think two thread I guess for now, and then we know if we get rid of the trace entirely. So this is with two thread six six seven seventy seven seventy three. Okay, and then we'll change this to a return. Remove parse payload entirely, so that's now gone. Oh, we're now in the sixes. I don't know how, because we weren't before. Oh, because we're two threads. Check this out. If we go to four, are we in the sevens again? Yes. In fact, one's probably going to be the fastest now. Yep. So there's a lot of factors, a lot of variables here. So now we know we're getting 679, 689. What about three threads? 685. So we're going to leave it at three then. Um, That's sub seven. It's just always sub seven. Obviously, sometimes it will spike over it. Ah, there's some noise. Right, cool off. Cool off. Ah, uh, fuck me, dude. I should just be doing this my own OS. This is fucking cringe. Fucking Linux, dude. It's so fucking noisy. You just can't do a benchmark, man. Um, okay. So now we know that we're getting like 600 there. Yeah, so we're spending like 40 millis processing the trace overhead. That's pretty fucking good. Unchecked. I can't believe that code, Jen. I can't believe okay or else is a fucking perf game there. 
Problem is, next version at LLVM, it probably won't be a perf gain. Everything will be shit. Um, okay, so we're not really paying a cost for that bounce check, which makes sense. That's what I would expect. So, really, we're just back to okay or else, and I don't think anything else is broken here. So this should be fully featured code. Everything's running. 720, 720. Wanna use Hyperfine? I'm not too familiar with it. Hyperfine, what is it? Oh, statistical analysis multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. nah, not my cup of tea. I'll do my own loops if I have to. Um, th this is not benchmarking here. This is not the benchmark. This is just like A B testing. This is the benchmark. Um, okay, so obviously that's a big gain. Uh, and let's see if we're stable. And I, I'm pretty sure we are pretty stable here. Beautiful. Beautiful. I would say that there is no difference between these two traces. So now we're actually measuring something. Cool. Um, and we know that there really isn't... Um, this is with, oh, this won't have a log. It won't have a log because we're not actually processing anything. Okay, um, that's fine. So I, I think looking at this, we have like, what's our slowdown for parsing? 72 over 660 and like a 9% slowdown to parse. That's totally fine. That, yeah, it's fine. I'm not happy about it. Let's see if we can improve it. Um, uh, hot pulling for that many iters. Let's see if upping the hot pull does anything. In this case, having a large hot pull won't matter. 723, no difference. Okay, so hot pull depth. We're obviously in our hot pull territory. Uh, parse that payload, get the new ticket, process the payload. Here's our, oh. Yeah, uh, let's see. So that does sequencing of traces. Let's see how much, uh, how expensive our sequencing is. Woo. Okay, so sequencing is like uh like three or four percent gain. Meh. Meh. Actually, let's comment out last data as well. Uh no, last data needs to update. Uh no, as long as hot pull updates, we should be fine here. Okay, trace. Let's go. 7-Eleven. So yeah, we could maybe save 5% there. I uh, can't say I really care. Um, I think this is where we start losing perf as we add threads, though. Um, and that's something we might think about. But other than that, we're really just receiving and parsing that payload. And then once we have the payload, we're sequencing it. Um, honestly, binary search here is probably wrong. Um, I don't, should we do binary search? We might be getting fucked by that. Um, This will never exceed. How many buffers are we using? 
16? Yeah, their binary search on 16 is going to be terrible. That being said, just getting this mutex will dwarf that. Let's see if we can even measure getting rid of this. Probably not. So we're going to still grab the lock. Uh, but we're not going to sequence it. And then we'll report the traces. Uh, that might deadlock. Let's just do this. Will this get us into that 711 territory? I don't think so. Uh, 700, 714. Okay, so sequencing is a cost. Um... I don't know. Maybe the hell one fix is all we really needed, dude. Let's uh let's let's start looking at real data then. Um let's switch this to a uh, reg trace. Um Okay. Okay. Build. To be honest, we have everything we need. We're going to now switch uh, from jitter always. Oh, yeah. And we need to change that before we forget. Um, let's make this hook mem. So we're going to start generating some more traffic. Um, we're going to be generating more data, but few packets, which is going to be interesting. Um, uh, lib reg trace, if I'm not mistaken, this is from examples, reg trace, uh, source lib. This will only hook registers. Now it's going to take a lot longer. But now we're going to be bottlenecking on... I don't know. Woof! That's what I like to see. Okay. Uh, obviously, we won't have any instruction stuff anymore. Let's start optimizing this. None of the reg trace stuff is optimized, although we might not be able to get it much faster than this. So obviously we can try threads. We're gonna try a bunch of shit. Um Okay, regs, regs, every instruction, and then we'll just do some. We don't have to actually parse the registers here. We're just going to ignore them for now. Okay. Okay, we're at least hooking that. We now should have the benchmark stuff because this is going to be on every instruction, uh, which is good. Um, okay, uh, and we're stuck at 80 million instructions a second. This is risk 64, which is, uh, I think 32 GPRs times eight bytes per 256 bytes, uh, 80 million times a second, 80 E6. Oh yeah, we're okay. There's no, uh, there's no room to perf gain here. <laughs> yeah, we literally can't perf gain this. Uh, this is just maxed. Uh, okay. 
Wow. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we can drop to one turn. It's probably not a huge punishment here. That felt like a long 13 seconds, but yeah, um, one threat is totally fine here. Shit. Okay, so that's... That's, uh... Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so I really want to do call stacks and I think to do call stacks I need PC, LR, and SP I have PC obviously I have LR and SP in this but it's not... I don't need all the other registers. I only need LR because I'm detecting branches via LR instead of disassembling. But if I were to know what instructions are actually calls... Hmm... <laughs> I wonder how hard it would be to know what a call is in Kimu. I don't know if Kimu will know what a call is. I... Because hmm. I can generically detect calls with PCLR only on uh, risk processors, things with LR. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Are you building a, a, a high performance uh process tracer? Um Mamma Mia Kimu. Otherwise, I just have to know what SP is. Every architecture has SP. I get to have, like, a knowledge of what SP is. Reduce the traffic where each instruction I report SP. I could maybe report it only on instructions that change SP. That's going to be really hard. I just don't know what instructions are. I would know those at lift. Ooh, buh, buh, buh. Cannoli, um... Whatever it calls this, hook inst. What is the name of the fucking function? You guys, thank you so much for the four months. Hell yeah. Hope you're having a good time. Um, uh, all I need is I need SP. Just too much data tracking all the registers. Hmm.
plus some my own boss. I got this swag and it's pumping on my ovaries. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Krayshawn, dude. Um, call N. <laughs> the, the fucking Kimu shit's so bad. <laughs> uh, Reg Alec call. That's actually doing a call. I could maybe do a hook on only jumps. Can you call a ret without a jump? No. I think that might be good, actually. Move, dupe, instruction starts. Op discard, set label, op call, dupe vec. Dupe to vec. Um, this isn't everything in here. Set label, uh, call. That's actually like a C++ call. Um. Uh, debug, debug, profiler ops. So, reg alloc going to here. So, we're going to fall through basically to reg alloc op for everything. Reg alloc op is actually going to handle the actual operations. Satisfy the input constraints. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. Ah! Um, death. So these are flags on defs. A def is an instruction. Op definition. Jeez, there's a fucking string in there. Jesus Christ. Um, output args, input args, uh, I don't know, C args, args, flags, and arg constraints. So here are the flags. Eight bits available, all of them are used. Um, instruction defines the end of a basic block. Has side effects. It cannot be removed. Yep, that's fair. Why is that dynamic? Oh my god, dude. Oh! I hate this jet. I need to not look at this. Um, conditional branch vector. Operants are 64 bit, BB end. Ugh, dynamic bitness, fucking gross. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. This makes me want to work on my jit so fucking bad every time I read this. So, how do I know? Is that the end? This is. Omit the instruction. Out up. It's a vec op and vec ops. Oh, just don't exist. Um, TCG out op. That's actually going to uh generate the assembly for the operation. Um. I want to know if it's a call. Or a branch. TCG op. Opcode param lifelink. TCG profile. TCG opcode. Uh... Fucking hate this shit, dude.
Is that a branch? It'd be really cool if they documented anything. Um, move, set conditional. That's going to be a memory barrier. Load, stores, arithmetics. Uh, there's a conditional branch. That's a BB end. BB end. Are all branches BB ends? Branch is a BB end. Beer con is a BB end. Beer con two is a BB end. Sixty four bits. Exit TB. Go to TB. Go to pointer. Um. Hmm. God damn it, no wonder this jit's so fucking slow. <laughs> ah! Um So I think we can key off of BB ends. It might be extra noisy. Set label, I don't know what that is. Branches, a branch conditional, branch conditional, branch conditional, exit uh 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 TB uh Translation block, go to translation block, go to pointer. I I don't see how I can branch without hitting those. And thus, I think we can just key off BB end. It's a little noisy because we got like exit TB and go to TB, although those are fine. I think what we can do is we can put a filtering mechanism on that. Um, BB end. BB exit. Exits the translation block. Some things don't. Yeah. Like a branch conditional does not necessarily exit the basic, uh, the translation block, which is good. Um, end of a basic block. So any branch ends a basic block, which makes sense. That's a reasonable, uh, way of designing an aisle. Um, so we want to do a uh, basic block and uh are you the cannoli lord? Of course I am. I have a fucking cannoli right here. How can I not be the cannoli lord if I have that? So um right Alec up. Unfortunately, I don't know <laughs> where to put this hook. Cause this will be on the up code. Fuck. There's switches here. So you can have a conditional branch. And then BB end. This is just register allocation stuff, I think. Bill <laughs> the Lord of Cannoli. Hmm. Emit instruction. I do have PC here. Any early returns? I don't see any. It only passes the PC. Um. Report. Um. Basic block ending instructions. Um which are effectively all branches and a little bit more. If def flags and TCG, um, if it's a BB end, then I think what we'll do is we'll call into, we should have access to cannoli. Uh, Mm. Hook instruction. Here's where you can say register. 
Defcon in your future? No, I'm not going. Um, hook inst. I don't know. I could have like a hook BB end. I kind of want to use the hook inst code. Hook type always. I could look forward. I'm typing spaces. <laughs> um, okay, so Let's go and hook inch lift. Cannoli lift. Nice. We do this on the instruction start op code. B7H30, thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. Riff raff inbound. Hell yeah. Hope you're hope you had a good a good uh I was gonna say a good raid. Hope you had a good stream. It's getting to be that about that time. Uh get the PC, lift the instruction. Uh, do I do like a look ahead? Um, streaming CTF stuff? Hell yeah. Thank you for having us anytime. I'm not, I, I'm not working hard here. Uh, let's go into this is Kimu. This is a fucking eight core box. Don't tell me it's going to rebuild shit. I literally just built this shit. What is, what is there to build? Thank God. It said no work to do, and then it started doing work. What, what's even changed? Literally just built this the other day. Oh, fuck off. Um, so I think we need to like look ahead in the stream. Uh, I don't know what this Q, Q tail Q for each. Varhead field for each op. 
How do I do like a look ahead here? What data structure are they using here? Healed TQE next. We have an op. What the fuck is an op? Is that being bound? Or is that a... It's a TCG op. Uh, link. Next and previous op codes. Okay. From S Ops. Q tail Q for each. Head first. I want to do like four each. What kind of what kind of options do I have here? I'm gonna do four each. Giving it a head. Do I have a TQH? I fucking hope not, but maybe I do. Uh, there's a next. Next and previous opcodes? How is there a previous in here? How is there a previous? How is there a pre uh, wh uh, what what? How the fuck is there a previous? For each. TKH first. Okay, um What's the end of the queue? Uh while while it's uh non null. God fucking tail queue for your fucking instructions, gross. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't, I can't stay in this code base. I fucking hate the Kimu Jit so much. It's so bad. Oh. Let's do uh, lift instruction. So I guess. Op, op, next. Op, link, TQE, next. Op, link, TQE, next. I guess this is like modern ish C, so I can do this. I'm just gonna do this. I, I don't like I don't like doing this in a for loop, dude. Personally, not my cup of tea. I prefer this.
It's like TC next. Not going to find it there. Link TQE next. The bad thing with Kimu is being a kitchen sink. The good thing with Kimu is the kitchen sink. Yep. I don't know. I mean, this JIT could just be way better and still have all the support that Kimu has. But... Okay, so that should work. How long do you get your JIT to do it instead? I mean, my JIT already does all of these things. Nothing we're doing here is new to me. We're just adding it to Kimu so that we can use it on more generic things. Mainly for other people. Um... Okay, and then wild temp op and temp op. OPC. I guess op has the flags on it directly. Uh, that while the opcode is not equal to that. Obviously, this is not going to loop at all, but, uh, moose. Uh, do we have flags? Is this where the flags are? Where the fuck were the flags? Uh, def, op def's op. We're going to do this while this blah, blah. That should work. Uh, this is now def flags. Wait, how the fuck was this building? It's not cannolied. What? Oh. Mm. Let's just do... Ah, we can do all three. This is fine. Not that much. This isn't bad. It's only a thousand files. This should fail to build because there's no flags on temp op. Right? Correct. And let's throw a little new line on here as well for good measure. Uh, get the op while we have an op, go to the next op, get the 
information about that op code. Get the flags. Burn out the flags. This time for sure. Come on. Come on. Beautiful. Okay. Nice. Now we got a lot of mooses. It's awesome. It's exactly what we wanted. All right. Um. I'll say end. I should have a pretty fast dev cycle now. Yeah, that's not terrible. Not great, not terrible. Yep, so here you can see it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes on. Fuck. Um. So. What I then want to do is I want to break early and we can say if temp op opcode is equal to instruction start break stop processing when we get uh, to the, um, next instruction starts. Right. So, for all of the opcodes, keep going to the next ones. Break when we get to the next instruction starts. Yeah? You like that logic, chat? I don't. Ah, fuck me. Oh, yes! Okay, that's right. Oh. Because the first instruction, because we're literally in, a, in an instart. So now we skip it. We skip the instart. All right. And then these, nice. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know, is it nice chat? Chat, I don't know. And there can be nothing after it. Oh, these are all the knobs. Those are all the knobs. E Z E Z. Here we can put a PC in there. You want a licks? You want, uh, should probably just read it. Target you long, long unsigned int. Yeah, that's a licks right there. Let's just say Zix. Make it real easy, cast that shit. E Z. You ready for this chat? What are we running?
Where are the knobs at? The fucking knobs at? There they are. Is the last knob uh three three two? It is. Then we got a three three four. And then the biggie. That's what we want. We want it to flag that. Let's go! Let's fucking go, baby! How am I such a goddamn good programmer? Literally never made a mistake in my life. Um, okay. So, uh, moose flags, and then the flags are, uh, this death. BB end. Yeah, BB end. So here we'll say F def flags. Uh, and BB end. It's so weird that you don't have to compare that to anything. Then we're going to print out the this and this, this, this. Uh,. Moosey. Okay, so this is going to... We are on the instruction start. We're going to look ahead in the instruction stream. We're going to stop when we get to the next instruction. And we're going to look and see if anything, any instruction in that chunk exits the basic block. And if it does, then we know that it theoretically can branch. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Check if this instruction has a, um, check if this instruction, uh, ends a basic block. How are we so fucking smart, chat? Oh, just every, every time I just realize that I'm me, I'm just so impressed. All right, so all these should be branches. 1034E, that's a branch. 1026A, that's a jump. 1061C, that's a jailer. 105D8, that's a ret. 105C4, that's a bluetooth. 105D8, let's, <laughs> let's just do this. Let's just do this. <laughs> Clap it up, chat. <sighs> yeah, these are all going to be branches. 10, 10198. This is going to be in start. Yep, it is. It's jump and start. 101 CO, these are in execution order. There's a jump, 10390, jump. Okay, so this should be an architecture agnostic detection of jumps um, or instructions that can jump. Uh, some things might be in here that maybe aren't jumps, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, anything that ends a basic block. And that's great because now we're only going to instrument those instructions. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, big brain, big brain. Um, int jump ahead. Uh, BB end. I'm, a, I'm assuming they have bulls here. I'm not sure. Um, Okay, um, we're looking to see if there are any instructions in this, um, look ahead at the aisle instructions for, uh, for the TCG instructions for this, um, instruction. If 
There is one that is a BB, a basic block, and we um, note we we save that info off. Here we're just looking for what could be branches. Um, all all BBN um all branches are uh, basic block ends in TCG. Um, some other things are also BBNs, uh, but that's okay. We uh, fail, um, or we won't have false uh, negatives, right? Only false positives. So basically, we we might flag some things as branches that aren't, but that's okay. Accumulate that information. That's pretty cheap. We just read ahead just a smidgen. We only do this on instruction starts, and then that means that we can actually jam that information through to lift instruction. Now we have to go into cannoli and change those things in cannoli internals. Jitter, uh, FFI, cannoli.h, lift instruction. We're going to have a 32 and a 64-bit variant. We're going to pass in uh, an int, which is going to be uh, BB end. Um, BB end indicates that the instruction being, being lifted and can end a basic block which is a strong indicator that it is a branch instruction. Um, this might be true for uh, non-branches, for some obscure non-branch cases. However, for branches, it is always true, right? Okay, int bb end. bb end. We're just going to plummet as an i32. I just don't really want to worry about the FFI boundaries. Yeah, we're just going to say zero. We're going to say this is int. And then this is one. Okay, um, lift. Now, all we have to do is plumb that information to the user. Um, yeah? Checkmate? Checkmate atheists? It's gonna fail because hook inst. Not expecting a boolean. A boolean, bo boolean, 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 boolean. <laughs> hook inst. Um. Ah. Huh? How did that build? Oh, it's just gonna be fucked. Yeah, now we have to go uh, anywhere that we do hook inst. Not too many places.
Okay. <laughs> Zam can't recognize the song despite the great performance. You hating on Krishan, dude? You just jealous, dude. Just a hater. Let's go. Let's go. Now we can go into examples source lib. Now this will say, uh, okay, okay. So you run everything right now. It's gonna take 13 seconds to run because we're, we're dumping the atheist communion shambles. This will take 13 seconds because it's dumping a shit ton of shit, okay? It's a shit ton of shit. All right. Now, if we say if branch else hook type never. Now it's an only going to do it on branch -olies, which is going to be more perf. What? Seems too fast. I mean, we're just hook type register hook. Are we getting data? Yeah, we have data. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Beautiful. How many instructions is this even running again? We were doing like a billion a second. Oh, this is this is good. I mean, these are all nops, so they have no cost. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, so right now what we did is we made it so that we plumbed through the information from Kimu using TCG operations so that we can generically architecture agnostically determine when something is a branch and based on when something is a branch that allows us to filter so we don't actually dump the registers on every instruction. So we've dropped our, our uh, register hooks down from every single instruction where we have to put 256 bytes into a stream which is causing about 20 gigabytes a second of memory bandwidth on a single core. So what we've done is we've changed it such that now you know that it's a branch, so you can only hook the locations that you care about. In this case, we only really care about branches, but now we're just gonna revert that because we're gonna start working on our own implementation of the same thing. Basically, it allows us to filter things up front so that we're not hooking everything, we're only hooking branches, and that's gonna really cut down on some of the noise and some of the expense of the operations. But we did it actually really cleanly. I, I thought we'd have to like do it architecturally specific, but we don't have to. So now, basically, you can do coverage guided fuzzing where you're only following branches, which is the same as instructions. Um, 
but for things like register where you're generating 20 gigs a second of of fucking serialized data it's pretty important that we can filter it down okay well we're fucking gods once again really nothing new here uh we are at some of the best code in the world um just just nothing new here dot jpeg dot co dot uk okay we got some ums Apparently, I can't copy and paste. Okay. All right. Kitties and Chop is not as good as the other album. Oh. Okay. Rain is a Those paths are fucked, and those paths are fucked. Now the paths are fixed. Now paths we got paths that are fixed why are there so many dependencies for this i don't know why there are so many dependencies uh that's uh that okay uh that would make sense now i gotta go back up here go into copy this to here and copy the thing from the folder and then we're gonna copy it, and then, and then, and then. And I have seen my reflection. Like, why is there a clap and shit in here? I don't fucking know. Okay, now we gotta change this. This now, um, uh, if my job needed protection. From a fucker like Batman, I'd sooner got him. Cause nothing cuts like a mother. Give him. You're not really gonna see the output of this. I uh, get fucked. Um, the output's right there. To know how to draw the line between right and mercy. So many ways to give in eyes closed. Uh, never. And I jump a lot. I did it. Some good shit. All right, uh, let's switch this to uh, Do I have an Eric 64 compiler? No, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Um Con There's so many ways to give in eyes closed. Do you know how to draw the line between right and see? Simmer, 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 simmer down. 
Uh, what register is SP on Risk Five? And I draw the line between right and seen. X two, dose, the dose. Um, all we need to push is SP and PC, I think. Now that I um, Okay, did any of this help? Turn me to fire. Yeah. My friend, you just give it. Just gonna log a uh, PC uh, and parsed to SP, PC SP. Ray chunks needs to be stable. Um, me. Can we do this? I think we can. I think if we're creative, we can make this work. Only 27. I'm 29! Curious, how do you get ball? Get out of here! I mean, fuck you! How do you get bald? Why are you such a loser? <laughs> D. 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 Colin. <laughs> Mold <laughs> PC SP Um, what's going on? <laughs> Am I dumb? 
Oh, no, I'm not dumb. It's a... Why are we running the benchmark? <sighs> Classic. Shit. We just care about the the first few thingies here. I'll just uh, t this log dot text run cancel. Okay, vim log dot text. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um. Cinnamon. Ban root chat. Traded his air for wisdom. Uh, ooh, ah, 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 ah. 198. Good. This is good. Let's get some claps. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is good. Let's unclap. Unclap. Unclap, chat. Unclap. Reverse the clap. Oh, God, that chord's so good. I don't know what chord that is, but it, it's a masterpiece. Um, fight you in cinnamon. Finally, if I die, I am free. Ooh. Stack PC L PC Sp Cinnamon Uh Keep SPC SSP keep things on the stack where SSP is greater than or equal to the current SP. Ah? Eh? Ah? Eh? Been round here. Why creeping? Uh, self dot stack dot push PCSP. This is gonna be a bad stack. Obviously, y'all know why. Um, but let's just see what it looks like. If you just hold your fucking breath for one second, chat. Why you creeping? Creeping. Why you creeping around? Holy shit. Blosh! There's a lot of prints. Okay? There's a lot of prints. All right? How out of control is this? It's out of control. Okay. So, um, this is, um, remove 
stack entries, which are below the current stack pointer. This detects returns as well as, um, this detects returns as well as, um, things like long jump, which may clear many, uh, entries in the stack trace in one swoop. Okay, so uh, only keep things where it is greater than or equal to the current stack pointer. Um, to be honest, we could just do this. That's not going to be good, is it? Is that going to be good? Oh my god. Is that? That can't be. Is this logic sufficient? That's a call stack. No! No! What? Y you can't you can't see it cuz I'm covering it just for fun. Um, oh, you can see it. You can see enough of it. It's fine. Um, what? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, if we look at this, um, no, 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 that's not good. Wait, no, wait. 10680. JR, this is Libsy start main. Jump to A5. That's just going to be main, I'm guessing. And then we get into that. 1061C. Jaller S3. Oh, that's jumping to libc start main stage two, and then this is jumping to S3. That logic cannot be sufficient. That is hot. That is hot F. Let's see how fast it runs. Instant. <laughs> I mean, is that fine? I think this is sufficient. Retain's not the most optimal thing here. Technically, I should look and go through the back. I want, like, retain until, I guess, is what I want. Seems a little too easy. You seem a little too easy. <laughs> Got him. I have a GNU compiler. We can use that. Uh, Test.c. Oh, my asshole. Printf. Hello, world. Uh... Oh, I don't. I, I can just build it for my host. Uh, we'll have to build, um... Build 64-bit. Uh, we'll just run my host one. It doesn't matter. I can just run host binaries in Kimu. It should be fine. Beating like a dead horse. Beating like a drum. 
Hello, world. My code is fucking perfect. My code is perfect and it's so goddamn good. My code's so good. I write the best fucking code. This code is so goddamn good. <laughs> Crunk, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. <laughs> When I say goodbye, I open and cry. Beat like a dead horse, beat like a drum. Kimu is built, and we built the Kimu. Now we can run Kimu, and then we'll run Kimu. And we'll pass in this Kimu, and x86, and then dot slash a dot out, and then. That design of maybe holy shit that doesn't look too fucked. If you fucked up the reg trace, you probably would have fuck stacks. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the gifted subs! Hitting some good ones, Crunk! I don't know why I'm calling you Crunk, but it, it's the easiest way to lex your name. Iter Rev. Um. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying the shit content today. Uh, my friend. My code is so fucking good. Well, let's build it static. And now it's static, that maybe will change things. Now it's a static. Oh my god, these look pretty fucking good. This might be actually a call stack. Holy shit, this might be a call stack. I didn't know that logic would be that easy to detect. This is the best damn code. Holy shit, this code is so good, this code is so fucking good, oh my god, this code's good. Ooh, my friends, and my code is good. Alright, um... <laughs> is it right? This can't be working. It's working though. My friend. Uh. My friend. Just 
my friend. Ooh, my friend. Stay together, stay. Um, ba 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 Uh, this is gonna resolve, uh, resolve, uh, PC into a symbol. Uh, module plus offset. Copy cannoli examples. Mod off atomic page table. Here we go. Baby, if you wanna try. Okay. Let's see how it is. Um, let's go. Wait, how the fuck did that work? That wouldn't work on XD6. We're using the wrong register. That's fine. We'll 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 worry about it later. It looks sane. It did not work. There's just no way that that worked. Uh, um, raw address symbol, uh, module name. Um, module offsets. You're the wrong register. Aww, thank you, Zom. Much love in this stream? Hell yeah, we're chilling. We're having some fun. Uh, I don't know how to use this library. What do I do, like, get? If let some. Module module off is equal to self dot shared mappings dot get adder. How am I so fucking good? Um. Huh? You like what you see? Me too. Well, that was fucking easy. Once again, best coder on the planet.
There's not even 32 registers on XA6. How is this not crash? Rags, rate chunks, eight, and name rate. Oh, we'll just partially initialize them. Oh, nice. Uh, trace. This is going to be uh, sim info. We'll symbolize it in parallel for perf. And then we'll, um, we'll symbolize it in parallel for perf. And then we'll, um, I don't know, throw some shit in there. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Pid dot, uh, resolve PC. This the lotus, lotus, lotus. Loading the fucking viruses. Uh, impl display a for sim info. Uh, right. Tifmt. We're going to write the address. And then I'll write the module offset. Uh, semi copy. Okay. Um, I can't tell those colors apart. That's fine. Let's go to lighter, though. That's better. I like that more. I think that's pretty good. That looks good. Obviously, that's not call stacks. Uh, what register is SP on x86? Like six? Four. Let's see if this breaks everything. That looks fine. Um, ob jump D M Intel D mangle A dot out disasm dot asm. Okay, um, four oh one five four B. Not a great look. That uh Call libc start main and start. <laughs> 4304. Call libc 
start call main. 1996. Uh, 401996. Call exit. Yeah, we're at the end. Call exit. Um, 409065. Call run exit handlers. 408FD6. Exit. 442267. Just call. God, my yards look so much better. Yep. Once again, kind of a god. More, no more, no more. I no more, no more, no more. La la da da da, my code's so fucking good. La da 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 la, la da 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 da, la la da la da da, la la da la da da, la da 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 da. I don't know what that's from. Grand Theft Auto Three. It's probably a famous song, but it's in Grand Theft Auto Three. All right, now we just have to figure out how we want to symbolize. Um, I think Ida. Let's symbolize with Ida. Let's scoop A dot out to uh, Gamey. What? You know what it is? Are you fucking kidding me? It's pretty famous. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Ooh, it's so good. Uh, it's still not my favorite Italian song, though. That's for damn sure. There's one Italian song that is my true love. I think this is the one that was in Grand Theft Auto. Uh... Oh, maybe not. Despacito. Yeah, that's my favorite Italian song. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> it's so good!
Okay, so the important thing to note is that these are these offsets that you can barely see because chat is covering them up. Chat, it's your fault. Um, these offsets are actually file offsets. These are not actually... Um, these aren't... These aren't... Um, uh, these aren't the actual offsets in that like text section. These are file offsets. So if I were to go to that instruction, or if I were to open this up, open up a dot out in the hex editor and go to this actual offset in the file, in the raw file, not the elf loaded sections, that's where it is. So there can be a discrepancy. There's no reason that they have to match up. In this binary, they do this AO, uh, A3 F, uh, A357 matches up with the, uh, this is the file offset in the IDA, the current offset in the input file. This is the actual like offset or the location. If this were, um, theoretically that sort of thing can, can be different. They can differ by a page, they can differ by a fuck ton. Uh, okay. Um... La 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 Key change. Maybe not. Maybe not a key change. No, maybe it was. The inside that is made in Italy. Oh, Brooklyn? I can't remember. If it says Italy or Brooklyn, I can't fucking remember. Um, for funk in functions. La 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 Just adders the funks. Okay, I want to know the boundaries of functions. Let's figure that out. What about names? It's a tuple. A uh, string object. Oh, it's the name. Uh, name thing. Okay. I want to know the boundaries of these as well. Historically, what I've done is I've just gone based on like the nearest symbol, but I, I, I think we can do better than that. Um, um, I forget what the... Get offset in the input file which corresponds to the given EA. Perfect. Uh... If 
not file off continue uh, i can fail uh what does it actually return does it give negative one for things like in bss and stuff there won't be a file offset correct negative one Okay, so now these are the file offsets and names. I kind of... Hmm. If I did it on functions, can I get the end of a function? Does Ida know where the function ends? Frame size... Tails. I think there's a way to get the start and the end of a function, right? Um... Funk range, lock range, lock funk, get funk, get a pointer to the function structure, pointer to a function or null pointer, returns a function entry chunk. We can try that. Um, uh, four six 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 C zero. Okay, that is a funk T. Does return. Can I just dir this? Contains addresses and EA? Uh, this? Hey! Is there like a name as well? Hey, Philippe, how's it going? Okay, so this will now show me the size. Um, uh, size, I don't know, 10x. It's probably big. It's, uh, it's probably a bit, that's probably a bit excessive, but uh, I only know excessive, so. Nothing, crash, what, nothing? Hello? EA doesn't exist. Ease. Uh, let's find a small function so we can count it. in the fucking cash. Yep, uh, that's 27. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Clap it up, chat. Okay. 
Oh, uh, now we just need the name. Get funk name. Any address in the function. Turn the shit up a notch. Kelk funk size. Oh, I don't think I want that. Because that works with fragments. And we don't want this to work with fragments. It's just going to be start to end is this function. Uh, doesn't work on fragmented stuff. Windows does a lot of fragmented stuff. Don't really give a shit. Um... And we nailed it. Classic. Okay. Um, I think that's all the information we need, right? So how do I associate the database? Also, how do I want to look these up? Can I binary search these? I think I can binary search these. I think I can binary search these. I think I think this is fine. I don't think I need to go ham because I have done that large filtering. Um. I think we're good. Let's just try it out for now. Relax, chat. We're just trying it out, okay? Um. That it? There's only a thousand functions in here? 1095? Wow, okay. All right. Sure. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll load the symbols when we create the PID context, I guess. Um, So we'll say that this file for now, that file maps to symbols.txt. For um, original symbols in file map, um, symbols is standard fs read to string symbols unwrap for now. And we'll just say expect. Failed to read symbol file. For line in symbols, let mute spool is line dot split n space. Let uh Start is spool next unwrap uh u64 from Sturatix This is the len Uh, split N3. 
And then let uh, symbol is equal to spool.next.unwrap. Um, let mute results is a beachy map. Yeah, beachy map's pointless here. We can just use a vector. Um, yeah, I think we'll just use a vector. And then we'll save, uh, results.push start lens symbol. Um... It's a tuple. Got lines. Okay, um... Yeah? How are we so fucking smart? How's that not fucked on lifetimes? Oh, we're not doing anything with the results. Um, 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 um. Insert baseline leak path into offsets baseline leak that if i add a t on shared mappings then i could store the symbols in there that's what we should do is that what we're going to do probably not is that what we should do yeah Insert. Um... Um, love your music. Hell yeah, JavaScript. What do you plan to do with all the expect calls? Just leave them. I can't do this because this is a fat pointer, right? Ugh.
Why does that gotta be a fat pointer, dude? Um, shit. Plus dot that. Okay. Um, that symbol. Uh, hmm. You can be a fat point. <laughs> Fucking rude, mate. Are box slices? Hmm. Tell me a fat pointer. That was a fat pointer some weeks ago, but I've lost lots of weight. Hell yeah, congrats, dude. Got into GPU programming recently. It's super fun, and man, those programs go brrrr. Hell yeah. I'm thinking about maybe making this page table, um... Allow you to just look up bytes directly? We're gonna we're gonna think about that. Can we get some colon thinkings and thinkings in chat? Cause we'll think about it. Became X fat. <laughs> I love static strings, dude. Um, ba -ba -ba we got this chat. Insert. Hmm. 
I don't like my names here, but that's okay. We're going to rewrite this code anyways. Damn right it doesn't. E Z clap. Okay, and now what we can do is when we resolve it, we can then look that up. Um, if let some symbols is equal to self dot symbols dot gets ref mo uh, get module else. So here's the different modes. This is uh, address is in an unknown module. Um, address in a known module, but unknown symbol. Uh, but we don't have symbols for that module. And then this is going to be uh, get that. So now we have the sims. Um, so I guess now we match on um, symbols.binary search by binary search by that. What does that want? Ordering. No, it will do a uh, by key. Uh, we're going to search for the, oh, did I do the EA? Yeah, that's wrong. Uh, this needs to be the, um, file offset. Big thinking. Shit. Ease. Okay. Um, search by key for the module offsets. Search addresses for that. Okay. That's an exact match. Error, um, uh, nearest match, and then that's going to be, if there are multiple matches, anyone can be returned. The index is chosen deterministically, but is subject to change. If error is returned, it contains the index where a matching element could be inserted. So we actually want to go to minus one. Um, so this is just going to be index, and this is going to be index. Um, checked sub one.
right? So first, try to find the nearest symbol. So that will find the nearest symbol if let sum index is index, else couldn't find a nearest symbol. Um, or the match was not in, um, or the match or the address was not in bounds of the length of the symbol, right? Or we have no symbol info for this file. Okay, uh, potential match check length. Um, let's sim off is equal to um, let sim is equal to ref symbols index. Uh, symbol offset, so this is address. No, this is module offset minus the sim address. If sim off is greater than or e uh, if it's less than, if the symbol offset is less than sim.1, um, address is in bounds at which point we have it symbol will be sim um dot two offset is sim off I don't know, like this is maybe close. Early return. Let's print it out. What's a good color? What's going to happen? Oh, my butthole. I think that works, but um, I don't like the color. So let's change the color. Uh, let's try 36. Nope. 37. 38, that's going to be background, isn't it? Are there things beyond this? No. Um, we can try red. That's not red. Red's 31. Hmm. Really? There's not a better color? Well, it's 33. Like yellow. That's fine. I can barely tell those apart, but that's fine. Chat, thoughts? Is this the syscall? Plus 27? Yes, it is. Uh, first try. Literally first try. 
There you go. So, um, this now maintains the call stack at all times, apparently. <laughs> Which is pretty damn good. And there's just, there's just really no perf cost to it. That perf cost is printing. If we were to run that to a log file... Yeah. Yeah, it literally runs in, in 0.46 seconds. Or 0.046. How long does it actually take? Alright, let's see. Parse the symbols and build our ass? Fuck no. Gross. You high? Um... Okay, and then let's take a look at that. Last log dot text. Yeah, we start off on start, we go into that, we go into knit, tunables. And these are all the locations of calls. So like if we go to this location, it's just gonna be a call, right? Or a, a branch. This is just a branch. Sorry. Um, because, yeah, that's that's the last place that we got um, instruction info. Nice. Puts. Actually, like, under, under, right? Yeah, look at this. Look at that! How are we so good? Uh, yep. Yeah, that looks like that works. <laughs> Ease! Uh, then we can add a hook on instructions. So we can put an always hook on here. Um, really? Oh, it's not a reg hook, so it's really not that expensive. Um, instruction yields trace. We can symbolize these as well. Let's symbolize every PC now. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. I ain't scared. Um. Um. PC, uh, inst. Uh, this is a uh, sim info. This is a uh, branch. Sim info and uh, SP, which I should probably label that. Um, uh, SP. Okay. Instruction execution, and then this is a branch. It's trace. Yep. Uh, this is a trace branch. 
So branches we hook with registers and everything else we don't hook with registers. Beautiful. PC, SP. I think we're doing good. I got some delimiter issues, okay? Not cool. Not cool at all. Monkas. Uh, 195 inst, uh, this is just PC, exec, uh, PID, so resolve all the symbols, so we're resolving them in parallel on multiple cores, then we sequence them together, uh, for int and trace, match int, uh, we're gonna match that with trace inst PC, Uh, trace, um, branch, PC, SP, E, fucking, Z. Okay. Push that, um, add the current branch. To the stack. Uh, we can dump the call stack. Eh, we don't need to right now, but we can. Um, all right. Nice. And then inst. Beautiful. So if we just print PCs, this will show me the PCs of everything that executes. Um... Uh, okay, so yep, we start at start, and it goes through every single instruction, and there, and there, and there, and there, and all that shit. Okay, and then what we can do is, um, so I kind of want to change my API here, um, so that these don't return options, and instead, they just get access to the trace buffer. Let's try that. Good. 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 And then trace. I think that can take a mute to that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Bam. E Z. Okay. Hopefully, I don't regret this. But I might do 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 do. I might regret this. Do 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 Uh, state dot user dot trace is this gonna take a mute? And then we're going to uh clear the trace buffer. Trace dot clear. Probably do that up here, don't we? Trace new. Got a new trace. That makes sense. Now we're not reallocating that theoretically. Uh, okay. No song. Well, fuck you.
Um. Oh, we do a trace that clear right here. <laughs> and that's that's already that. Okay, so these just uh, looks like we throw it on the end of everything. It's already a mute ref. I don't know. Hopefully you don't regurt this. I've regurted worse. <laughs> Gotta change all the tests and the tests are all broken. And the tests are broken. We gotta fix all the tests now. Cause we did a breaking API change. I don't know why I am doing this. Actually, I do. There's really good reasons to do this. Maybe. Take me to the ceiling. And I'll be here. Hopefully this is right. Uh, hopefully this is right. Unit te Yo, fuck unit tests. Unit tests are fucking trash. Don't borrow check me, Rust. Don't do this to me, Rust. I need to have like a trace buffer lit free list. I think. Let's do this for now. Still reallocating. That's the workspace, that's fine. Secret when the lights go out. Okay. Uh, trace mute vec. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Okay, executing an instruction, also branching to an instruction. And to see him about me. Push the execution events, push the branch events. 
That is why we changed that API. So now we can push both of these. So be both of these are instruction hooks. Um, Twenty-nine. What do we change? Uh, uh, oh, uh, now we get events on calls as well, or on branches as well. So we'll always see these instructions anytime we execute, either execute or we do a register dump, which depends on if it's a branch. We'll always push the PC. So we'll see every single PC in the trace. Um, so that's good. Then, um, the call stack might have a spurious most recent branch. And that's okay. That's a okay. It's in motion. It's in motion. Um, here's the call stack on every single instruction. <laughs> but yeah, there might be like one spurious thing in the call stack. So there's the current instruction up top. And then the call stack. Oh god, that's great. <laughs> yep, like here you can see that we just actually called into this. Um, wow. This is great. Looking at your mempipe implementation, for what I understand, you have n buffers to fill and a toggle flag. Yeah. Latency could not be the best, but you got high throughput? No, this is optimized for latency, not throughput. It's technically optimized for both latency and throughput, because in this case, they are actually the same. But latency matters way more than throughput. Yeah, so like, here's a spurious case. This is not actually going to be a call. This is just the most recent branch. And that's okay. It's fine. But this will absolutely be a call. Yep, that's libc, right? That's the uh, a call to the, that. Yep, and that's an indirect call, which is cool. There's a do new right call. Here's another. Oh, that's a branch. Oh, that's because that hasn't been cleared off the stack. That's okay. We don't clear things until we return up. So it's going to be a little verbose. It might include a couple extra things, but it, it won't miss things. How big are the chunks? They're like 256k, but uh, I think they're fastest on like 32 or 64k. Put... Yeah, is there any way that it could clean up those? I don't think so. I can't clean things up until I observe. Basically, the stack accumulates entries 
until... Oh, that actually is an interesting case. Yeah, so this is an interesting case in that it branches, and then it pushes. This is probably handwritten assembly. Um, yeah. That's why that's so strange. Because it, it literally... It does a branch, and then it pushes. So technically, to my view, the stack... We have gone down the stack, which we have, um, and thus I can't really differentiate these things. But once we go back up, these will get flushed out. Um, I think this is fine. There might be a couple spurious things here or there, but it won't be missing anything. And it will go all the way up to start in every case, even in like really, really obscure, complex cases. Um... God, that is hot. That is hot. And then how fast is this? Um, trying to think, like, what, what can we do for a little bit better benchmark? Um... We'll just sprint F. And then we'll just do this like uh, for ints. GCC. O O G test up C. And static. It's not optimizing this out, is it? No, it can't. Probably don't want to do a build. Maybe 10 mil times. I just want it to have like some runtime costs. That's fine. Uh 238. Let's actually go one more. Like 2.38 seconds, nice. And that should be stable. Nice. That is stable. Good. Okay. Um, let's try and run it in this case, in the cannoli case. Oh, uh, we're literally printing the fucking things every time. Yeah, of course that's going to be slow. XD lull. X fucking D. Let's just get rid of logs so we know that we're being dumb. If we're being dumb. Um, okay. Run that. Run this. Technically, I don't need to hook every PC. That's going to be hurting us a bit. I really am just here to benchmark the call stack stuff. And memory doesn't seem to be going up, so I don't think we're accumulating a stack. Maybe we are. If for some reason we ever get stuck and we start accumulating a stack frame, then that's going to really hurt us. Um, why is this so slow? Let's do it without cannoli. We're just going to disable cannoli entirely on this, but we're just we're running it in Kimu uninstrumented. Seriously? Holy dick. Okay, I thought I was slowing down. <laughs> Holy shit. 25 seconds. Fuck me. 
Um, we could build it uh, with optimizations. I don't think that will help us too much in this case. Oh, well, it'll just optimize that whole thing out. But, I mean, we're completely in libc anyways, so the optimization of our code doesn't really matter here. Okay, so we know that this runs like 25 seconds. So it's about a 10x slowdown from native in Kimu, which is... Uncharacteristically bad, I feel. Um, okay, so then we're going to turn off this hook. So we're only going to be hooking uh, registers on branches. Still going to be pretty expensive, but let's see. Oh, well, this is... Um, that's uninstrumented. Instrumented. So this is instrumented. It's handling the call stack. Um... We're processing all those things. Come on. Come on, rip. I think we're bottlenecking on our, maybe our binary search. Yikes. Let's just uh, trim the benchmark. Go down by an order of mag. Wow. Wow. 18 seconds uninstrumented. Two seconds. Holy shit. Why is that so slow? Are we getting like a stack growth issue? It's the only thing I can think of. I'm just gonna, I think what we can do is this. Assert self.stack.len is less than 100, okay? That should be good enough. Okay. That is not the issue. So we're not, like, we're not getting a massive stack. Huh. We're probably not even exceeding, like, 20 then. I mean, we might. We might dip into the 20 territory. Nope. Not even 20. Um, God, why is that so fucking slow? Trace. Unless we just have that many branches. Could also be this code being shit. Let's try this. Let's try um, SP is five. Okay. So we're not going to parse these regs. We're going to see if it's parsing those regs. Oh, God, this is my boyfriend. That is a big part of it. 
And then the rest is going to be symbol resolution. And I think specifically symbol resolution. I think my um, atomic table is pretty good. But I think the, the symbol stuff is ass. This binary search, I think, sucks. Which is fair. Maybe my hash table sucks. Maybe it's just recording the info. Maybe that's just the traffic from this register log. Maybe we just have that many branches. Or maybe there's like a rep move instruction that is causing this to be catastrophically slow even though it's not Print in, don't really care worst problems okay let's try uh this and then we'll do that pushes that pushes this is gonna be always see how many instructions we're executing and what percentage are branches I've got you too. Na, 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 na. Um, branches, instructions. I guess I broke up with my boyfriend and. I don't know if I'm bomb necking on these prints. We'll see. If this takes like 18 seconds, then I'm not. We're bomb necking on the prints. Console block or, or formatting block? I right, have formatting block. Let's try this. Please, 18 seconds. No, nah, it's still bottlenecking, I think. Um, I don't know. Uh... Okay, only every 10 million instructions. Actually, uh, every 100 mil instructions. Fuck it, I don't give a shit. Check it. God damn, that's slow. Is it? That much traffic? I don't think so. What is slow here? My symbol look up? Maybe my table's not as good as I thought. So we had approximately this many branches, uh, 623 million branches, uh, divided by 32.31 seconds. So we're doing about uh, 19 million lookups per second. Um, 19 million lookups a second. Uh, that's 19 million branches per second. Which is uh, that times 256. 
Okay, that's 4.9 gigabytes a second of register traffic. Which is a lot, I guess. I guess that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, okay? It's a lot. That's a lot. It's still not maxing out bandwidth, though. Well, on top of that, we're doing this many instructions per second. And each one of these is... Um, these are 8 bytes each. Technically 9. Is that 10 gigs a second? No, that's 1 gig a second. Yeah, so we're generating maybe like six or seven gigs a second of traffic. Ah, uh, we should be able to handle that. I, th God, can my database not handle 19 million lookups per second? That's bad. That's bad. Do I need to add a fucking cache? Cause yeah, I'm not I'm not bottlenecking on fucking traffic. Let's um This is all due to resolving PC. If I don't do anything for the trace, if we just return here and don't process the trace, let's see what happens here. Now we're like A B testing, we're figuring out where our slowdown is. I think our slowdown is in resolving. We'll see if it's in processing the trace. This is basically testing. Is it retaining on the stack? We can obviously optimize this a bit. We can optimize this a bit. And this is still going to be like the 31, 32 seconds. Right? Cool. So trace processing is not the bottleneck. And this is the only single threaded thing. This is multi-threaded, and maybe we just need more cores. Um, we do know that this is slow as fuck. So let's fix that real quick. Uh, let's say, um, um, let SP is equal to uh, regs as pointer. Sh shut up, chat. Uh, as uh, const u64. Dot add two, four, DRF. Okay. Relax. Done. Now SP is just that. All right. Did that get us anything? Got to use no SQL. That's perfect. Oh, y'all. Do you get any noticeable perf gain here? Nope, no perf gain there. That's fine. I also, where's my task set on that? How am I bottlenecking on IO? How am I bottlenecking on IO? How am I bottlenecking? How is there any red in my H top? Uh, because I am hot, I'm, am I pushing that off? Is 
It's even more IO bound. What the fuck? Is it allocations on the trace buffers? God, please be allocations on the trace buffers. I think it's allocations on the trace buffers. Yes, 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 yes. Please, please, please. Please, 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 please. Free traces. That doesn't have to be mute. Goodness. This can just be a slice. Ooh, eh, ooh, eh. Free traces. Let's clear it. Yeah, fuck it. We don't need to. Just fucking leave it. Uh, traces push that. Bam. Nice. Uh, mm hmm. It's not building, is it? How? Because this is wrong. Wrong proto. My home. Let's get lost. Come on. Okay, bam. Wait, how does this work? What? Oh, because we do it here. About to say, whew, that should not build. All right, nice. Um, okay. Um, we need a new trace. Uh, try the free list. Need a new trace buffer. Will this do anything? Will this change the perf? No. You know what? I think we actually are bottlenecking on IL, on traffic, because we're not using all these cores. Oh, um, also we're not giving this a, uh, let's do this. Let's go down to four cores. Ah. Maybe a little faster. Um, okay. We are saturating all those cores. Hey, kitty sec, how's it going?
This is okay. Is this still like 30 seconds? Yep. Let's try six cores. Do we gain anything by adding cores? Okay, those are 100%. Are you? It's cute, a valid answer. I'm doing great. Uh, just doing some benchmarking right now, and it's 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 not going as well as I thought. Okay, there we go. There's a drop. Let's try eight. Uh, eight might start hurting us because this is an eight core machine, and that probably starts cutting into Kimu. It does. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess I just can't do that many hits in my database per second. All right, I guess we're going to start doing this on the host now. Um, uh, 180, I think, right now. Dot. Okay, and then I made Kimu changes too, didn't I? Uh, added branch support for cannoli. Uh, get format patch. Standard out against origin master. Okay. I'll have to pull down cannoli. Um... Get AM three way cannoli Kimu patches. Get reset hard origin master. Uh, get rebase abort. Get AM abort. Reset, patch, add branch supports. Okay. Okay. What about a cannoli cooking stream next time? Oh, that'd be great. I don't know. I would be kind of afraid to make cannolis. It doesn't sound easy, to be honest. Um... Okay, so this is now building it for my host. That will run it as well. Okay, and then... Um, yep. Uh, Kimu build... Uh, Kimu, oh, uh, Linux user, add that architecture. Hello, recursive chat. Gold, let's go. 
This time for sure. This time for sure. Come on. Link that shit. Hello. Can translate this recipe. Is the elm so good, dude? When I needed you Come on Generate those fucking docks Uh X D six sixty four cannoli um, benchmark, reg, trace, target, release, lib, jitter, so, uh, add out, out. And now we could start looking into adding cores. But we might just be bottlenecking on that IPC. Yeah, we're definitely bottlenecking on symbol resolution. Why am I lying to myself? Let's add let's add uh 20 processing cores. Fucking Linux schedulers, dude, man. Ugh! Linux cannot schedule this for shit. Feels bad. I fucking hate the Linux scheduler, dude. EU friendly stream, hell yeah. Time to write a new scheduler? Yeah, it is. It's called my own OS. It doesn't have these problems. Let's see. Is it is it a symbol resolution bottleneck? It, it probably is. It probably, it probably fucking is. Kill me. Kill me. If let sum equals none, can I do that? Is that valid rust? Oh, yes, it is. It's faster by maybe a factor of two, but it's not massive, to be honest. Yeah, that's still 20 seconds. And this is like, what, 30 seconds maybe? Let's, uh, let's try and pin some cores, see if we can get anything. Task set C. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Task set C. Eight. We're ballnecking on Kimu. 
transferring data. You can feel when there's more activity on the system and not. That's wild. Like right now there's more load. And that's just other other things using resources fucking. Wow. Really, the only thing I could do is maybe detect calls instead of just branches, detect calls. I could also have it maybe be aware of what the SP register is and try and cut down on some of the traffic there. Am I doing exact tracing right now? I am. Oh, yeah, we're entirely bottlenecking on... We're 100% bottlenecking on... Kimu producing the traces. There's really nothing we can do about that. Huh. Yeah. I mean, that got rid of so many results. We're entirely bottlenecking on Kimu. I mean, probably just system noise and stuff too. I just have too much shit going on on my system. But like, I'm for every fucking, like what is my branch to uh, instruction ratio? There, for every branch, there are how many instructions? Six? So I just one-sixth... I did a one-sixth reduction of my PC resolutions, which is my symbol resolutions. Didn't matter. It did not fucking matter. It, it did not change perf, which means that we are entirely bottlenecking on producing that trace. That's crazy. It's really not that much traffic. Wow. I... I don't know. Maybe this is just the limits of... Hardware. Obviously, we could reduce the amount of information we're transferring by only reporting SP. I could maybe have this take ranges where you can, when you hook registers, you could give it a the set of registers that you want recorded I think that would probably be the play so let's see if I if I switch uh if I just switch this to a return hook type always All right so now we're just going to do pc tracing which means we're still going to resolve a, bo a boatload of shit but we're not actually going to like do anything this is probably going to be fast. Yeah. Honestly, it's not that fast. Why is this so slow? Maybe we are bottling on resolve. If I don't resolve anything in exec, what happens? God damn it. Unless it's traces, but we should be using the free list uh, relatively frequently. PC resolve. None. Wouldn't this give me full perf then? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? 
Unless it's the trees. Is it just the the trees? Whoa, something's happening. Something's going on. Something's not good here. Um holy shit. Uh mm, mm. Uh Trace that clear. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? How am I, how am I leaking? That's clearly the problem. How am I leaking? What am I leaking? It's trace. It has to be. That's the same virtual memory usage. Something about trace.push is leaking. Okay, well, that would make sense. If I'm literally leaking memory, then my perf is shit. And I am absolutely leaking memory. How? My free list probably isn't working. Should only see the spew. Let's uh, turn down my thread so it will get a one thread. We should spew, see the spew a couple times and then stop. Whoa. Just one? Oh, one would make sense. We're not leaking here. Should I two? Um. Hmm. There's gonna be 32 of those because we have 16 buffers. And that's the most out of order that you have to get to sequence them. I have to do that per. Traces get put into the trace list. We then need a new trace. And those are... Hmm. Do we have too much outstanding memory? Three traces pop. Get the TFR. Maybe the free list is hurting me. That's a thread local free list. Hmm. Hmm. Um, we could do, um,
Now when we allocate a new trace, we hint it with the size that it previously was. It's so like, nah, nah. Hmm. Are those freelists hurting me? I think so. New and new trace buffer. I like that. That was a good comment. Um. Try this. I think keeping these free traces around is actually hurting me because it's just increasing memory usage by keeping them around. Move the trace so that will just let it be freed. Okay. This is with two processors. But yeah, we're not bottlenecking on the lookups too bad, I don't think. Four cores speed up? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe? Twelve six nine, nice. Okay, eight. Now it's slower. We actually lost perf by going to eight. And that's because we're task setting. That makes sense. Uh That would really make sense, to be honest. Uh, okay, okay, this and this. Slow AF, dude. Slow AF. Is it fast on four? Hmm. Less contention over sequencing? Thirteen seconds isn't bad. What does it run without cannoli? Four seconds. And let's hook only registers on branches. That's not bad. It's not great though. Hmm. And I think that's just symbolizing then. I mean, I guess maybe I don't want to symbolize Like, I want to symbolize it when it's threaded, but... Oh, that's not symbolizing it. Now we get the real slow. The same. Yeah, I think my lookups are basically free then. Hmm. That's interesting. Feels bad, man. Like. That's symbolizing everything. All the call stacks, all the time. Unless it's this retain. So the other thing is I could, uh, I could maybe improve the speed of the retain. It's the only thing I could think of, because 
I don't know, that symbolizing stuff didn't seem to matter for Perf. If I'm being, if I'm being real with ya. Um, maybe it's sequencing of the packets. Blocking on these. Which is this stack retain. I don't know, let's try it. Let's try a uh, return. Does that, does this get us anything? No. Wait, it just won't print. We don't know yet. Nope. So, it's not processing the trace. I think pushing to the trace is pretty big. Feels bad. Um... Hmm. PID resolve. We look up the PID. Or the PC. I don't know. Looks good to me. I'm happy with it for now. It's not great. Maybe a 4x slowdown over Kimu. So we're running... What? Uh... Oh, you shook since the second? Uh, PID resolve... Zero for now. Well, you can just resolve PC. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Uh, always hook. Now I think it's actually bottlenecking on resolving. It's running like a hundred million instructions a second right now. Not great. Yeah, I guess there's just no fa fast way to do this. I mean, it's still pretty good. Maintaining a symbolized call stack on every single PC at 100 million instructions a second. Not bad. Not great. All right, chat, I'm going to send you off somewhere. I don't know where yet. Let me figure that out. Disappointing. Disappointing. I thought we could get faster than that. Fucking Sag, dude. Uh, we'll send you off to Lana, because Lana's fucking awesome. Uh, see you around. Behave. Be nice. Have fun. I'm going to go sleep. Ciao, ciao.